All praises to the Most High. Shalom, shalom, family. Most High God bless you all. We're back once again for another glorious day, the Sabbath. Okay? We're going to be going over some scripts. As always, Lord, do all praises to the Most High God for this day we made it. Uh, so today, today's topic is Titus 2 Deep Dive. Titus 2 Deep Dive. So we're going to be deep diving into Titus 2. Uh, we're going to be dealing with the sisters particularly, so pay close attention. So sisters, we love you. So today is your day. We're going to be going over this thing. Um, give me the book of Proverbs. Let's start there. Proverbs 31. Start with 10. Proverbs 31 and 10. Let's start there. Okay, push the door a little bit. Okay, Proverbs 31, start with 10. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10. Go ahead. Who can find a virtuous woman? That's the question, isn't it? Who can find a virtuous woman? The Lord is asking the question, who can find that type of woman? A virtuous woman. Read. For her price is far above rubies. He says, for her price is far above rubies. Meaning a price, you cannot measure the price of a virtuous woman. According to the scriptures, the Lord is saying. Go ahead. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. You see that? A virtuous woman, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Meaning this woman is trustworthy. She's loyal. She's about her Lord's business. Okay? When her husband is about their father's business, her, her mind is on her Lord's business. You see that? Read again. The Proverbs chapter 31 verse 11. Read. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. You see that? The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Read. So that he shall have no need of spoil. So that he shall have no need of spoil. Don't nobody want to be spoiling the woman. Why? Because the heart of her husband does safely trust in her and she is a virtuous woman. Meaning the Lord is telling you a virtuous woman is hard to find. A virtuous woman must be built up to become one. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 18 verse 22. Proverbs 18 verse 22. Get the definition of virtuous. Get the definition of virtuous. Okay, read that. Proverbs 18 verse 22. From Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Read. Whoso findeth a wife. Whoso findeth a wife. So, because the man is the one that findeth a wife. You understand? Whoso findeth a wife. Meaning that woman is, is she's already in her wife state of mind. You understand? In her father's house. She's already in her wife's state of mind. That's why I said, Who, whoso findeth a wife. Go ahead. Find it a good thing. She does he does what now? Find it a good thing. Meaning a wife is a good thing. You see that? The Bible is letting you know a wife is a good thing. Okay, go ahead. And obtain a favor of the Lord. You are obtaining favor of the Lord. So you finding a virtuous woman, you basically getting favor from the Mosa. The Mosa is showing you favor if you find a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's some heavy stuff right there. Man. Because why? The, the marriage is an is a honorable thing, man. So that's why the Lord says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and you shall obtain favor of the Lord. Did we get the definition of virtuous? Put it up. Put it up. The definition of virtuous. Let's see what is a virtuous woman, man. Because so that's not the word we use all the time. So let's get the definition of it. Okay, you got it? Yes, sir. Read. Definition of virtuous. Read. Having or showing high moral standards. You see that? Having or showing high moral standards. Meaning this woman, she has, and not only that she has high moral standards, but she shows high moral standards by her conduct, by her behavior. You understand? That's what the Lord is showing you right there, man. Okay? Read the second one. What did he say? Second definition. Uh -huh. Chase. Chase. So chaste is says typically used of a woman. So being chaste, the Lord is telling you this woman, she has a strong name. She's not a spring chicken that is all over the place. You understand? Chaste, chaste, chaste. We're going to read about that next. Okay, we're going to read about that. Go back now. Proverbs 31. The book of Proverbs chapter 31, verse 20. Verse 10. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Read verse 10 again. From Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Watch this. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Go ahead. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a woman that has a high moral standard? Where do you get these moral standards from? The Holy Bible. 
That's where she gets them from. That means she what she has got she's got she's got a, she's got an understanding of what she needs to do when it comes to this book. Because she's been taught, she's been groomed. You understand? Go ahead. For her price is far above root. For her price is far above rupees. You know what that means? Give me that in Sarah 7. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Um, read verse. Read verse 26. From Ecclesiastes chapter, 20, chapter 7, verse 26. You know what? Read verse 19. Let's read that. Verse 19. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 19. Come on. For go not a wise and good woman. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't leave a wise and good woman. For go not a wise and good woman. What makes this woman wise? Give me Psalms 19, verse 7. This is what makes this woman to be wise. Okay? Read that in Psalms 19, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Come on. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Mm -hmm. Making wise the simple. You see that? Making wise the simple. So what makes us wise? The laws of God. Because the most High God is telling each and every one of us that we're simple as hell without his book, without his commandments. Okay? Give me that in Sarah chapter 1. Okay? Sarah chapter 1. Um, read verse 26. Watch this. Sarah 1, 26. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 26. Read. If thou desire wisdom. If you desire wisdom. Remember it says, making wise is simple. The Lord is saying, forego not a wise woman. Read. Keep the commandments. Do what now? Keep the commandments. So you see what the Bible is saying? That's a commandment, man. Read again, verse 26. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 26. Read. If thou desire wisdom. If you desire wisdom. Read. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments of the Most High God if you want wisdom. Read. The Lord shall give her unto thee. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. The Lord will give you wisdom. That's some heavy stuff, man. Go back. Go back. Come on. Sarah 7, verse 19. Let's read that again. For Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 19. Read. For go not a wise and good woman. You see what the Bible is saying? For go not a wise and good woman. A wise woman is the one that keeps the laws of God. Read. For her grace is above gold. You see that? For her grace is above gold. Meaning this woman, she's got the grace goes into her character. You understand her attitude, her femininity. You understand that? Her kindness and all that. If that's what he's going into. All, 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 all about that, she don't have a big mouth. Okay? Because no man wants that, man. There's no man that wants a woman with a big mouth. A woman with a big mouth, she'll just destroy everything. Read the Bible again, verse 19. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 19. Come on. Forgo not a wise and good woman. He says, don't forgo a wise and good woman. Read. For her grace is above gold. For her grace is above what? Above gold. Above gold. Watch this. Go back now. Let's go back to Proverbs, man. Proverbs 31 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Come on. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a woman that has a high moral standard? Read. For her price is far above rupees. Because her price is far above gold. Why? Because she's a wise and good woman. That's why her price is far above rupees. Read. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. You see that? The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. You see that? Meaning this woman has proved herself to her husband. Okay, come on. So that he shall have no need of spoiling. So he shall have no need of nobody spoiling the woman. Read. She will do him good. She will do what now? She will do him good. This woman will do him good. Come on. Not evil. And not evil. All the days of her life. All the days of her life. You know why it says all the days of her life? Because this is what she understood. Give me that in Genesis 2. The second last verse. Watch this. She will do him good all the days of her life. Okay. Watch this. Read it. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Watch this. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, mm. and shall cleave unto his wife. And shall cleave unto his wife. Come on. And they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. So it says, she shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Give me Judith 12 verse 14. Watch this. Because our former Judith was a virtuous woman, man. 
And this is what we read because this is before Judy's time in Proverbs 31. This is before her time. So she was a virtuous woman. She was following her foremothers of old. Okay? Read that again. Read, read, read that from Judy 12. Yeah. Judy chapter 12, verse 14. Watch this. The book of Judy chapter 12, verse 14. Read. Then said Judy unto him, mm -hmm. Who am I now? That I should gainsay my Lord. You see that our foremother Judith was agreeable. Our foremother Judith was agreeable. She was not a disagreeable woman. She was an agreeable woman. Okay? He says, Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Because if you gainsay your Lord, it means you are not on his program. It means the two of you are not one flesh. That's what it means. The two of you are not one flesh because you gainsay your Lord. Therefore, you are no longer on his program. You're sitting on Satan's flat, sucking on his nipples. That's what you do. You understand? Read again. Come on. The book of Judy, chapter 12, verse 14. You know, brothers, you don't keep me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just go home. <laughs> you know? Go ahead. Read verse 14 again. Is that, what, is that where we are? Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on, man. Read that. Judy 12, verse 14. The book of Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Read. Then said Judith unto him, uh -huh. Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? That, that's his asking a rhetorical question. Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Because when you see a sister, she is combative, she's disagreeable. That's not a woman you should make. She's telling you, I'm not very material. She's telling you, I'm just, I'm a destroyer. That's what she's telling you. She's telling you, I'm a homewrecker. That woman, that's what she's telling you. You stay away from that sister. Read. Surely, mm. whatsoever pleaseth him. You see that? What surely, she said, by fire, by force. Surely, whatsoever pleaseth him. Go ahead. Will I do speedily? He says, I will do speedily. Meaning, when you say, uh, sis, pick up, the, give me that thing. Listen, she's just how hard. Basically, that's the answer. Why? Because our former Judy, she understood the power of submission, man. Our former the Judith was extremely submissive. And she's teaching you sisters that are coming behind it, that's what you must do to score a good, a good man, a lord. Not a husband, a lord. Read. Surely whatsoever pleases him. Surely whatsoever pleases him, according to the scriptures, read. I will do speedily. I will do speedily, but watch the next part of that verse. Go ahead. And shall be my joy unto the day of my death. That's the same, that's what we just read in Proverbs 31, verse 9. The same thing. And it shall be my what? It shall be my joy. It shall be my what now? It shall be my joy. So if you don't have the fruit of the screen called joy, you're not going to do this. Because joy is the fruit of the spirit. Give me that in Galatians 5. Verse 22. Joy is the fruit of the spirit. That means, the sisters, before you get married, sisters, you guess what? The fruits of the spirit, you must pray for those things. Pray for the fruit of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit that you may have them. Because the day you get married, and whenever you did not focus on the list of the fruits of the spirit, guess what? You're not gonna delight your husband. And your husband will not delight in you. Your husband will not delight in you. His heart cannot safely trust in you. Therefore, you don't have a husband. You are without. Read what you got. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the spirit is love. The keeping of the commandment. Read. Joy. Mm. What now? Joy. You see that our former Judith, she had the fruit of the spirit. She had this fruit of the spirit. She had joy in her heart. That's why it says, and it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. So she understood what is going to bring joy to her husband. She understood that. She understood that she understood that if I do that, the days of my husband will be doubled. Not only her husband, but her life also, her life spent will also be doubled. You know, because when the husband gets blessed, the wife gets blessed. Let's prove that. Give me Genesis 17, man. I'm going to show you that. Genesis chapter 17, when our forefather Abraham was blessed by the Mosai. Watch this. Genesis chapter 17, read verse 5. The book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. Read. Neither shall thy name any more. Actually, you know what? Let's start with this one. We're going to jump. Yes, sir. Genesis 17 and 1. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. Watch this. And when, when, and when Abraham was 90, 
was 90 years old and nine. Uh -huh. The Lord appeared to Abraham. Oui. Said unto him, mm -hmm. I am the Almighty God. I am the Almighty God. Come on. Walk before me. He says, Walk before me in truth. Go ahead. Be the perfect. And be thou perfect. And keep the, this is how you walk before the Lord. You become perfect. How? You apply the commandments. Read. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. Mm -hmm. And will multiply thee exceedingly. And I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. Go ahead. And Abraham fell on his face. Mm -hmm. God talked with him. Mm -hmm. The Saints. Lord spoke, spoke to our forefather Abraham. The most like, the Lord stopped everything what he was doing, and he came down to speak to our forefather Abraham. Heavy stuff. Read. Say, mm -hmm. as for me, behold, the covenant is with thee. My argument is with you. Go ahead. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Those many nations is the twelve tribes of Israel. Come on. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. He says your name will be no more Abraham. I'm changing your name now. The Lord is doing that thing, man. The Lord is changing our forefather Abraham's name. Hmm. Go ahead. But thy name shall be Abraham. But your name shall be Abraham. Come on. For a father of many nations have I made thee. He says, for a father of many nations have I made thee. So our forefather Abraham is a father of many nations. How many nations? Twelve nations that came out of Jacob. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 15 now. Watch this. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. God said unto Abraham, mm -hmm. As for Sarai thy wife. As for your wife now, Sarai. Go ahead. Thou shalt not call her name Sarai. As don't call her name, don't call her Sarai anymore. Read. But Sarah. But Sarah. Come on. But Sarah mm -hmm. shall her name be. You see that? And but Sarah shall her name be. You see the blessing that our forefather Abraham got, the wife got. You see that? Read. And I will bless her. And I will do what now? I will bless her. You see that? So our forefather Abraham was blessed. So was the wife. Our foremother Sarah. She was blessed. Read. And give thee a son also of her. You see that? And give thee a son also of her. Meaning, she's going to give you a son. Read. Yea, I will bless her. Mm. And she shall be a mother of nations. She shall be a mother of nations. Go ahead. Kings of people shall be of her. You see that? The Lord is giving you the answer right there. The father of many nations. Those nations were going to come out of our former mother Sarah. He's letting you because how many children does our former mother Sarah have? Only one, Isaac, our forefather. You understand? So he's letting you know, it's not about everybody on the planet Earth. And the children that came out of Isaac, whom the Lord chose, wasn't Esau, it was Jacob. So how many nations? Twelve nations. Okay? Now, go back. Go back to Judith 12. Read verse 14 again. The book of Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Watch this. Then said Judith unto him. You know what this is also letting you know? You see, I'm going to show you something. You see the blessing that our forefather Abraham got and the wife got? Give me the book of Genesis, man. Let's go further back. Mm. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Genesis chapter 2. Read verse 7. Genesis 2 verse 7, man. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. He formed man of the dust of the ground. Come on. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm. Man became a living soul. And this man became a living soul. This is our forefather Adam, man. You understand? Jump down to verse... Mm, I read verse 18. Verse 18. Uh -huh. I'm going to read this again, but it's fine. Go ahead. The Lord God said, mm. It is not good. That the man should be alone. Which man? The one that was made in Genesis 2 verse 7. That in his nostrils was given the breath of life. Read. I will make him and help meet for him. Mm. And he I says will, he will what? I will make him and help meet for him. Watch this. Verse 20. No, no. Verse. Yeah. Verse 20. Watch this. Verse 20. Uh -huh. And Adam gave names to all cattle. And who? And Adam. And Adam. And Adam. And Adam gave names to all cattle. So the man here is Adam. The name of the man is Adam, right? Read. So, so, because Adam didn't name himself. The Lord did. The Lord named him Adam. Go ahead. And the fall of the egg. And to every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. But for Adam. For, but for who? For Adam. Go ahead. 
There was not found and help meet for him four days. Give me Genesis 5 and 1, real quick. The book of Genesis, chapter 5, verse 1. Watch this. Come on. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Mm -hmm. The genealogy of Adam. Read. In the day that God created man, mm. in the likeness of God made he him. In the likeness of God made he him. So people that saw what Adam looked like, they knew what God looked like. The people that saw what Adam looked like, they knew what God looked like. Guess what? Who saw Adam? Moses. Moses saw Adam. So Moses knew what the Lord looked like. He knew it. Then Moses knew what the Lord looked like. Because he saw Adam. He's like, oh, okay. In the likeness of God, they he him. Read. Male and female created he them. Watch this. Blessed them. And what now? And blessed them. Watch the next part of that verse. Come on. Called their name Adam. And do what now? And called their name Adam. And called their name Adam. So who named Adam? The Lord did that. Adam didn't name himself. Go ahead. In the day when they were created. In the day when they were created. Now go back to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Now read verse 21. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Read. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Read verse 20 because that's where we were. We're going to read down. 20. Uh, from Genesis chapter 2 verse 20 Come on and Adam gave names to all cattle He gave names to all cattle Open your Bible Why don't you have your Bible open? Okay, read that Bible again The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 20 Read and Adam gave names to all cattle And God, Adam gave names to all cattle Because Adam understood the spirits of his animals That the Lord made Read And to the fall of the earth mm -hmm. And to every beast of the field Go ahead but for Adam, mm. there was not found and help meet for him. And help that was good for him. Not a partner. And help that was good for him. Go ahead. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Ray. And he slept. Mm -hmm. And he took one of his ribs and closed the flesh instead thereof. Ray. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man mm. made he a woman. Made he a woman. This is Eve now. Go ahead. And brought her unto the man. And brought her unto the man. Not she, he, not it. No, no, there was no gender fluid going on here. Read. And Adam said, mm -hmm. This now, this is now bone of my bones. This is now bone of my bones. Come on. And flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. She shall be called woman. She shall be what? She shall be called woman. She shall be called woman. Come on. Because she was taken out of men. You see that? Not only did Adam name all the fowls and the animals that the Lord made. No, no. He also named, he named the woman that came out of him. You understand? She shall be called woman. You understand? Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3, I'll read verse 20. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. Watch this. And Adam called his wife's name Eve. You see that? And Adam called his wife's name Eve. So Adam gave his wife's name. Mm. That's beautiful, man. Go ahead. Because she was the mother of all living. She was the mother of all living. So the blessing that Adam got, she got. The blessing that Adam got, she got. She got the blessing. Adam had them, because remember it says he called their name Adam. You understand? So now Adam, when, 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 when he was created, he, the Lord is like, okay, name them. And he did. Just like Adam was commanded to name all the animals, he named his wife's name. You understand? That's some heavy stuff, man. <laughs> this is beautiful, man. So the blessing that Adam got, the wife Eve got. Just like we read now with our forefather Abraham, the blessing that he got, our foremother Sarah, she got the same blessing as well. It says, kings of people shall be of her. You see that? Hmm. Go back to Jude. Jude chapter 12, read verse 14 again. The book of Jude chapter 12 verse 14. Read. Then said Judith unto him, hmm. Who am I now? That I should gain say my Lord? Who am I now that I should gain say my Lord? Who am I now that I should go against? Because go against him means to go against. Who am I now that has to go against my law? Read. Surely, whatsoever pleases him. He says, surely. Surely. Go ahead. Meaning there's no doubt in their mind. Read. Whatsoever pleases him, mm -hmm. I will do speedily. I will do that thing speedily, she says. Read. And it shall be my joy. It shall be my what? It shall be my joy. You see, this right here, many sisters that have that competitive, manly, masculine spirit, 
they be twitching like robots like you. Come on, sisters, it's time to repent. You understand? Go ahead. Shall be my joy until the day of my death. You see that because she understood that the blessing that her husband got is the same blessing that she's going to get. You know how that goes into Give me first Peter's three. Watch this. I want to show you something, man. Give me first Peter's man. First Peter's three. First Peter chapter three. I'll read verse The first book of Peter, chapter three, verse seven. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands. Ye husbands, okay, come on. Dwell with them according to knowledge. He says, dwell with your wives according to knowledge, meaning according to the law. Get that in Malachi 2 verse 7 so we understand. He says, dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Let's read that. Malachi 2 and 7. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. For the priest lives to keep knowledge. Because who's the priest? You. You the husband. You the priest in the house. Okay. Read again. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Read. For the priest lips should keep knowledge. For the priest lips should keep knowledge. Come on. And they should seek the law in his mouth. And they, and they should, they, mean they that are learning from him, they should seek the what? They should seek the law in his mouth. They should seek the law at the mouth of the priest. Go ahead. For he is the messenger. For he is the what? He is the messenger. For he is the messenger. Come on. Of the Lord of hosts. Now that's some heavy stuff. That's a huge responsibility on the man. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The meaning he's the messenger of the Lord of armies. That's what it means, hosts. Army, not army, armies. You understand? Here on earth and up there in the heavens. So you are the messenger of such a powerful, supreme being. The most like God of heaven and earth. That black man up there with the beautiful Afro. That's a heavy responsibility, man. That's where the Lord is commanding the black man. He says, Dwell with them according to knowledge, meaning according to the law that I've given you. Okay, go back. Go back to first Peter. The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 7. Read. Likewise, ye husbands. Ye husbands. Come on. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them. Dwell with your wives according to knowledge, according to the law. Read. Giving honor unto the wife. How do you give honor unto your wife? This is how you give honor unto your wife. Hmm. Give me Hebrews 13 verse 4. I want to show you something. You give honor unto your wife. Because remember, when a woman doesn't get married, what can you do? You understand? People just pass her by. Nobody wants to stop in and say, hey sister, I want to take your hand in marriage. Where's your father? So, this is how a husband gives honor to a woman. Read it. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. four. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage. That's how a husband, that's how a man gives honor to a woman. He marries her. Because without a man, only feed what? You understand? Okay, come on. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. And that's all I want. Marriage is an honorable thing. So when a, when a husband takes a wife, guess what? That's an honor. That's the, the, the man is bringing honor to the woman. You understand? Because marriage, because men are the one that control marriage again. I'm the one that decides whether I want to marry the sister or not. The man is the one that decides. The sister can want to get married all she wants. But if the man don't say, I want to take your hand in marriage, she will be sin. You see the point? Uh-huh. Go back now. First Peter, chapter 3, read verse 7 again. The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 7. Come on. Likewise, he has been. Likewise, he has been. Read. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according to the laws of God. Read. Giving honor unto the wife. Giving honor unto the wife. As unto the weaker vessel. As unto the weaker vessel. So, yes, marriage is part of that. When you marry a woman, you give him honor unto her. So it's letting you know how important an honorable marriage is. So when sisters, when they say, yeah, but me, I want a man that does such and such and that law, that's fine. Okay, but guess what? He has to decide at the end of the day to marry. That's the point. Okay, now watch this. Give me that in First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. When it says, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker person. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 33. Come on. For God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. Right? But of peace. But of what? Part of peace. Because guess what? Peace, that's the fruit of the spirit too. 
Peace is a fruit of the spirit. So the woman that brings you joy, not only that, she will bring you peace as well. Not just joy, but peace too. Read. As in all the churches of the saints, mm -hmm. the Israelites. Go ahead. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Meaning what? We don't want any Jezebel bishops up in here. That are going to be standing in the front and talking about telling men what to do. No, that's not happening. Read teaching men the Bible. That's not going to happen. Read. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Because the speaking here goes into teaching the men. Read. But they are commanded to be under obedience. To be under obedience, to fall in their order, in their proper role. Read. As also said the law. As also saith the law in Genesis 3.16. Go ahead. And if they will learn anything. And if they will learn anything, come on. Let them ask their husbands at home. You see that? That's how you give honor unto your wife as unto the weaker best. You give her honor by teaching her the laws of God. The most that God is giving honor unto us, the men, how? By waking us up and giving us our role as the leaders of the nation that we may be able to do what? To bring honor to our nation. That's how the Lord brought, brings honor unto the nation. By waking up the leaders to teach the people. You understand? Go ahead. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. It is a shame for women to stand in the pulpit and talk about I'm a pastor. I'm a prophetess. No. It is a shame. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. There's not supposed to be any woman standing in the pulpit teaching about teaching men. We sit in the Christian church and they are off. They are 100% wrong. Some Israelite camp, they are doing that too. You cannot make it happen. Yep, yep, yep. I've seen a video on the streets where the sister is teaching with the brother and the sister is the one that is teaching and the brother is bringing up the scriptures. You understand? In Bible, all the great. This is crazy, man. Sister, she's wearing pants. The brother is at the back. He's holding the Bible. She's teaching. You understand? Yes, you see the stuff in the in Israel in the, in the Israel community too. Don't think it's just in the Christian church, man. It's also taking place in Israel. You cannot make this stuff up, but yeah, it's the truth. It's taking place. Okay, go back to Judith. No, no, no. Go back to First Peter three. First Peter three. A brief seven. One more again. The thing is, the reason why I'm going over this when he says, and it shall be there my joy unto the day of my death, I'm going to show you why our foremother Judith was saying what she was saying. Read The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 7. Go ahead. Likewise, ye husbands, mm -hmm. dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Read Giving honor unto the wife. Giving honor unto the wife by teaching her the laws of God. By may taking a hand in marriage and teaching her the laws of God. That's how you give honor unto your wife. Read. As unto the weaker vessel. As unto the weaker vessel, because they are the weaker of the species when it comes to men and women. We are the strongest, we smarter, we stronger. Yeah, I said, <laughs> we smarter, we stronger. You understand? That's how the Lord made us, man. We go up in this. <laughs> hmm. I almost said something there, man. Go ahead. And as being and as being as together as being as together as together you understand go ahead of the grace of life of the grace of life meaning eternal life read that your prayers be not hindered that part right there that your prayers be not hindered so now when then your prayers will only get hindered because remember if your wife does not honor her husband your prayers will not be hindered your prayers will not the lord will not answer your prayers so our foremother Judith, she wanted to make sure that the part of the reason why I'm going to support my husband, I'm not going to gain say my Lord. Because when you can say your Lord, and you know what the scripture says, your prayers are going to be hindered. That means this woman is hindering your prayers. The Lord is not going to hear you when you pray because of this woman that you win. The Lord is not going to listen to your prayers, man. Read again that your what? That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. Now go back to verse uh, Judith 12. See, our former Judith, she understood this. She understood that I need to step into my role that the Lord has given her, and she going to fulfill that role, that the prayers of her husband be not hindered. Read what you got. Well, Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, mm. Who am I now? That I should gain say my Lord. Because remember, when you can say your husband, what do you say? How about when you can say 
with your husband, you are saying their house is divided. You say you want your house to be divided and you went against that said the law. The rabbi says that the two shall be one flesh. Meaning you must be in the same spirit and the same mind. The minute the wife be the, the, the woman is now no longer in her same in the same spirit as her husband, your prayers will be hindered. Your prayers will be hindered, man. And then she don't care whether her prayers are hindered or not. She's doing it because what? She hates you telling her what to do. So therefore, she's going to be combative, she's going to get sick, so that when you pray, the Lord don't answer your prayers. That's some evil stuff, man. That's some evil stuff. Read. The book of Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, mm -hmm. Who am I now that I should cancel my Lord? You see that? Because the reason why I'm holding on this is very important that sisters, those that are married and those that are yet to get married, you don't this, you know that, especially you know the scriptures now. You understand what the Bible is. And there's many scriptures, there's many classes that have been brought out. We going over the virtuous woman ascending into the virtuous woman. There's many classes that have been put out. I'm going over this because there's things I want to touch on. Okay? Because, give, hold this, give me that in uh, First Corinthians 1. Yeah, First Corinthians 1 and 10. Read that for me. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 10. Read. Now I beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. That ye all speak the same thing. That ye what now? That ye all speak the same thing. That you all speak the same thing. Read. And that there be no divisions among you. Stop right there. So when a woman gains says her Lord, that means there's division in the house now. That means Satan has entered into the house now. You understand? Read. That there be no divisions among you. That there be no divisions among you because the minute we are divided in the house, guess what? How can the most High deal with that house? He can't deal with your house. Read. But that ye be perfectly joined together. That you must be perfectly joined together. Remember what we read in Genesis 2. It says the two shall be one flesh. That you be perfectly joined together. Literally, it says this is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Read. In the same mind. In the same mind, meaning you must think the same things according to what that said the Lord. And in the same judgment. And in the same judgment, you must see things the same way as pertaining to the Lord. Read. For it has been declared unto me. Okay, that's it on that. Give me Sarah 25 more. I just want to hone in on that point. Sarah 25 and verse 1. Of Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 1. Watch this. In three things I was beautified. Uh -huh. and stood up beautiful both before God and men. You see, this is the, the Lord says this, these are the things that beautify him. These are the things that glorify him. Read. The unity of brethren. The unity of the brethren. When we come together, we unite. We are in the same spirit, same mind. The Lord says, You glorify me. Go ahead. Love of neighbors. There's love of neighbors. We come together as a congregation and all that. Like what we dream right now. On the Sabbath day, we come in together to hear the word of the most high God. Guess what? The Lord says, You glorify me. Go ahead. A man and a wife. A what now? A man and a wife. A man and a wife. Read. That agree together. That what now? That agree together. So now, when you are married, or yet to get married, you can say your father in the house, guess what? You're not going to get married, man. Because in your father's house, that's where you learn. You rehearse those righteous acts. So that when you are being given off, guess what? You know what to do. You know how to do it. Okay, you don't get in your Lord. That's why the Lord says, a man and a wife that agree together, meaning they are in the same mind and in the same judgment. You're not going to get say your Lord. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. When is him that, when is him that dwelleth with the wife of understanding? You see that is, when is that man that dwells with the wife of understanding? If your wife has understanding, understanding of what? The scriptures. How does she get understanding? She applies herself. You understand? Read. And that had not slipped with his tongue. And he had not slipped with his tongue. Come on. And that had not and that, and that had not served a man more unworthy than himself. You see that? And you have not served a man more unworthy than yourself. Now here's the thing. By the way, you see what this was? Because if you dwell with a wife that has not understanding, you know what she's gonna do? She gonna be telling you, yeah, but why are you already listening to the leadership? Why are you doing that? 
And there now you are a troll, you can't think for yourself. She is pumping you. She's putting you in a corner. You know what she said? She said, stop listening to the niggas. Because that's how she looks at her. Niggas. You don't see the prophets of the most high God back on this end. No. So she's gonna she you know what she's she's isolating you. She's isolating you, man. That's what she's doing. I hope you men understand that. Okay? Give me that in Sarah 40. Sarah chapter 40. Um, read verse. Yeah, verse 23. Sarah 40, verse 23. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 40, verse 23. Watch this. A friend and a companion never meet amiss. It says, A friend and a companion, they never meet amiss. They never meet of season. Read, watch this. But above both, but above a friend and a companion, come on, is a wife with a husband. He, he says, The thing that is better than a friend and a companion is a wife with a husband. But the reason why, what makes the wife and her husband better is a much deeper friendship is because of what? Is because they agree together. That's why it says the friendship is good because we meet, we come together. The laws of God makes us to be friends because we agree on the same thing. But now a much deeper friendship and a much deeper companionship is a wife with a husband. So if a wife and a, if a wife with a husband where a wife and a husband, they don't have a friendship that is deeper and a companionship that is deeper, guess what? Something going on in that house. You understand? James 4 verse 1 is taking place in that house. Understand that thing. Okay, go back to Jude 12 now. Let's go back there. Jude chapter 12 verse 14. One more again. The book of Jude chapter 12 verse 14. Ray. Then said Jude unto him, mm. Who am I now that I should gain say my Lord? You see that? Who am I now that I should gain say my Lord? Read. Surely, whatsoever pleases him. Whatsoever pleases my Lord. What's going to happen? I will do still. I'm going to do that thing still with a quickness. Go ahead. It shall be my joy. And it shall be my what? It shall be my joy. It shall be my joy. Come on. Unto the day of my death. Because our former the Judith understood the importance of doing this. She understood that when I mean when I get when I gain say my Lord, they guess what? There will not be joy in this house. When I gain say my Lord, our prayers will be hindered. When I gain say my Lord, the Lord will not deal with my Lord. Our former Judy, she understood all that, man. That's why she had the fruit of the spirit called joy. So you sisters that are married, make sure that you pray for that fruit of the spirit if you don't have one. If you're not paid, make sure you look for, pray for the fruit of the spirit. Fast for it if you have to. Why? Because that fruit of the spirit is going to be necessary for the health of your marriage. Understand that? Because your husband will be conquering the world, going to different cities, different countries, teaching the gospel, putting his life on the line for his nation. Your job is to make sure that you bring joy to this man. Your job is to understand the role that the Lord has given him and how you support him in his role. By, by submitting yourself to your role that God gave. That is what the most high God is. And our former mother Judith, she understood this thing very well. Okay? Read again. I want this verse to sink in. The book of Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, mm. Who am I now that I should gain say my Lord? Read. Surely, whatsoever pleases him, mm. I will do spill. And it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. You see that? It shall be my joy until the day of my death. She understood that day. She got it, man. She understood it. Okay. Now watch this. Go back to Proverbs. Let's go back. Proverbs 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Um, read verse 7. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 11. Read. Heart of a husband will save the trust in her. Because who must prove herself between the man and the woman in the marriage? The woman. What I mean by that is, you see when it says the heart of her husband does safely trust in her. That means this woman has, has done or doing something for her husband to trust him. So much so that, you know, the, of course, remember, men, we simple. Not stupid. I mean, we keep it simple. You understand? We want basic stuff. Submission, you understand? Silence, sex. You see, those three S's are very important to you. Mm -hmm. And fitness too, femininity and all that. My point is, you do all those things, guess what? 
you will be trusted. Whenever you need something, ah, you're going to get extra. Whenever you need something, you're going to get extra because the heart of a husband just safely trusts in him. But guess what? You're not submissive, you combat it, you argument it, you understand? You have a big mouth and all of that. You don't want to stroke your man's ego. Listen, you're not going to get nothing you want. You're not going to get, you're going to get what you need, but you're not going to get what you want. You get what you need, you get a roof over your head, you get clothes on your back, and, you know, food on the table and all. But the other stuff, you know, the things that you desire and want, you're not going to get them. You know why? Because the heart of your husband does not safely trust in you. Because you're not trustworthy. Your ways are moving. You understand? Go ahead. The heart of a, the poor Proverbs chapter 31 verse 11. Watch this. The heart of a husband could safely trust in him. Mm -hmm. So that he shall have no need of spoil. So that he shall have no need of spoil. Now, give me the book of Titus now. Okay? Because here's what sisters need to understand. Because I've already, I've already studied Titus 2. Don't think we studied the book of Titus now. We're already in Titus 2, right? Mm -hmm. You understand? So, you sisters, you have a role. And you must know what your role is. You must fulfill that role. And you must, it must be your joy until the day of your death. You must understand your role, understand what it entails, and fulfill it. Okay? Titus 2, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Come on. The aged women likewise. The aged women likewise. The aged women, meaning the women that are of age. Come on. That they be in behavior as becoming holy. Meaning the older sisters. There's, this message is to you now. Read again. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Read. The aged woman likewise. Mm -hmm. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness. Come on. Not false accusers. Read. Not given too much wine. There must not be drunkards like we see now the older the age women today in our communities where we stay. You understand? In the hood, in the classes where we stay. Guess what? They are false accusers. They give it, they, they give themselves to wine. But I'm very upstairs in the cassette. They drinking goody reds and um, and hunters dries and whatnot. We see them. Read. Teachers of good things. So the age women. They must be teachers of good things. Now let's dig deep into this. Give me the book. Give me the book of First Peter 3 and 5. First Peter, let's go back here. First Peter 3 and 5. Let's deal with the age woman. Our foremother Sarah. Watch this. Come on. The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. For after this manner, mm. the old time, the holy woman also. You see that it says in the old time, the holy women also. So our forefather, the apostle Peter, is taking you back now. He's taking, he's taking you back to the old time, meaning in the past. Women of old, foremothers. Okay, read again verse 5. The, the first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. Read. For after this manner, mm. the old time, the holy women also. The holy women also, okay, come on. Who trusted in God. They did what? Who trusted in God. You cannot be a holy woman and not trust in the Lord. You cannot trust in the Lord and not be a holy woman. They do go hand in hand. Come on. Adorn themselves. They adorn themselves. Go ahead. Being in subjection. Being in what? Being in subjection. Meaning the way they carry themselves, the way they dressed up, they were what? They were showing that they are in subjection to what? And to their own husbands. And to their own husbands. So if you're not married, you must dress up like you married. Because you have, a, you have, you have the mindset of a wife. Not the mindset of a girlfriend, no. Girlfriends by parody means that they, they show their cleavages. You understand? Okay, oh praise, we back. Give me first Peter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Read that. The first book of Peter. The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. For after this manner, in the old time. In the what now? In the old time. In the old time. So the apostle Peter is letting us know that listen. Look back into the old time, what happened in the past. Go ahead. The holy woman also. You see that? So he's speaking to the sisters. He says, in the old time, the holy women also. What made these women holy in of old? Give me that in Romans 7. Romans 7 verse 12. Let's see what made these women of old holy. What made them holy? Read that. Romans 7 verse 12. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Read. Wherefore, the law is holy. 
You see that? That's what made these women the women of old holy. The law. Read. The commandment. Hold. The commandment made the women of old time that the apostle Peter is talking about. Their foremothers. Okay, that's what made them hold the commandments. Come on. Just and good. And just and good. So what made the women of old good? You understand? That that made them holy and just was the laws and the commandments. That's why. Now watch this. Um, go back. This book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. After this manner in the old time. Actually, you know what? Yeah, keep it, keep it. The holy women also. The holy women also. So what made these women holy was what? The law and the commandments. That's what made the women holy of old that the apostle Peter is referring. Go ahead. Who trusted in God. Who did what now? Who trusted in God. Stop right there. So the reason why they, these women, our foremothers, they trusted in God is because they kept the commandments of God. That's why they trusted in God. So a virtuous woman, can, you cannot be a virtuous woman, but you don't trust in the most high. How are you going to be a virtuous woman? A virtuous woman, Pena, is a hard to find type of woman. She's got a high moral standard. The world don't teach that. So in the world, outside of this truth, you're not going to find a virtuous woman. You are not going to find a virtuous woman out there in the world because the requirements for being a virtuous woman means you have a high moral standard. You keep the commandments of the most high God. You know your role. You know your honor. You know your responsibility that the Lord has given you. And you fulfill that role with joy, like a former the Jew said. Okay? Hold this. He says, who trusted in God? Give me that in Sarah 2. Sarah chapter 2, uh, read verse 9. Actually, read verse 10. Let's get to the point. Sarah 2 and 10. Because it is Yesterday's chapter 2, verse 10. This is good. Come on. Look at the generations of old. You see that? It says, look at the generations of old. Come on. And see, mm. did ever any trust in the Lord? Did ever any trust in the Lord? Meaning the generations of old, they trusted in the Lord. Come on. It was confounded. And they were confounded. Our foremothers of old, they were not confounded because they trusted in God. Go ahead. Or did any abide in his fear? Mm -hmm. And was forsaken? Did any abide in the laws of God and was what? Was forsaken. The Lord did not forsake any of our foremothers that abode in his commandments. Read. Or whom? Did he ever despise mm -hmm. and call upon him? You see that? When you call upon the Lord, they, they are, or the holy women also, they pray. They pray because to call upon the Lord is to pray. You understand? They send up the prayers for the nation. They prayed for their husbands. They prayed for the troops. They understood all that. Okay? Go back. First Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 5. Read. For after this manner in the old time, mm. the holy women also. The holy women also, come on. Who trusted in God. You see that? You know how they trusted in the Lord? I'm going to show you what they did. Give me that in Acts 17, verse 4. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 4. Let's go back, man. I'm going to show you something. Acts 17, verse 4. Let's read that. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 4. Read. And some of them believed. And some of them believed what the apostle Paul was teaching. Read the verse above. Read verse 2. The book of Acts chapter 17 verse 2. This is what the apostle Paul was teaching the Jews in Thessalonica. Okay? Start of verse 1 so we get it. The book of Acts chapter 17 verse 1. Read. Now, when they had passed through Amphib Amphibolis, Amphibolis uh -huh. and Apollonius, Apollonia. Apollonia, Read. they came to Thessalonica, the place where there is where no believers. You understand? Read. Where was a synagogue of the Jews? You see that? So when you read the book of Thessalonians, you're not talking about white people of is Israelites scattered in Thessalonica. They were called Thessalonians. Right now, we are Israelites scattered in South Africa. What are we called? South Africans. You see how that works? Go ahead. And Paul, as his manner was, mm. went in unto them. He went in unto the Jews in Thessalonica. What did he do? And three Sabbath days. Three Sabbath days. What did he do? Reason with them out of the scriptures. You see, that's how you reason. You reason out of this, not out of your feelings. You reason out of the scriptures. Come on. Opening and alleging mm. that Christ must must needs have suffered. Read. And risen again from the dead. And risen again from the dead. Come on. And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Watch this. Next verse. And some of them believe. Some of them believe what the apostle Paul was teaching because. Thessalonica was known for what? Having non-believers. Read. And consorted with Paul and 
disciples. Mais they agreed with what the apostle Paul and Silas our forefathers was teaching. Go ahead. Donc des devout Greeks. The Israelites scattered in Greece. Israelites that grew up in Greek customs like Timothy was one. Read. 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 Let, let's read it. Give me that in Acts 16 verse 1. You understand? In case there's some doubting Thomas is up again. And on lie too. Come on. Acts 16 verse 1. Watch this. Then came he to Derby mm -hmm. and said and Lystra. And Lystra. Come, uh, come on. And behold, a certain disciple was there mm. named Timotheus. Timotheus. Timotheus was a disciple. Read. Son of a certain woman, mm -hmm. which was a Jewess, which was a Jewess. This woman was a Jewess, was a Jew. Come on, he believed, but his father was a Greek. When we say he says he believed, but his father was a Greek, what that mean? His father was a Greek. Keep me, which was well reported of by, of by the brethren that were in Lystria and Iconium. Iconium. Watch this. Him would Paul have. He would Paul have to go forth with him. So Paul had to travel with Timotheus. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. And he took and circumcised him because of the Jews. You see that? So the apostle Paul had to circumcise Timothy. Go ahead. Because of the Jews which were in those quarters. The Jews that were in those quarters in Lystra, Iconium. You understand? Derby. Go ahead. For they knew all that his father was a Greek. Because they all knew that his father was a Greek. What does it mean they all knew that his father was a Greek? Give me that in 2nd Maccabees. Is it 1st first, Maccabees first 6? They all knew that his father was a Greek. Let's see. 1st Maccabees, chapter 6. No, 2nd Maccabees 6. That's what I want. 2nd Maccabees 6, verse 6. The 2nd book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Watch this. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. He says it was against the law for us, the Jews, under the Greeks, to keep the Sabbath days. All this, first matter is one and one. So we understand that who, who, who was ruling during the time of, of the Maccabees. Let's understand it. Okay, first matter is one and one. The first book of Maccabees, chapter one, verse one. Watch this. And it happened after that Alexander. Alexander, Alexander come on. Son of Philip, son of Philip, the Macedonian, the Macedonian. Okay, come on. Who came out of the land of Chittim? Chittim is wrong. Come on. Had smitten Darius, king of the Persian mm -hmm. Medes. Yeah, go ahead. Then he reigned in his stead, mm -hmm. the first over Greece. The first over what? Over Greece. So during the time of the Maccabees, the Greeks was ruling. Now go back to Second Maccabees six. Now. Second Maccabees chapter six. Read the six again. The second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Watch this. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. So under the Greeks, we were not allowed to observe the Sabbath like we're doing now. We couldn't gather together like this, like we're doing right now. Go ahead. Or ancient feasts. Or ancient feasts, meaning the tabernacles. You understand? The feast of the Passover. The first fruit. We could not observe those feasts. Read. Right? Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Stop right there. Or to do what now? To profess himself at all to be a Jew. So under the Greeks, you know what the Greeks started to do when they took over? They took away our nationality. You couldn't call yourself a Jew. So you were forced to call yourself a Greek. That's why Paul Timothy's father was a Greek because he was a forced conversion. They were forced to become Greeks, but he was an Israelite. You understand? So Timothy's father, when he say he was, but his father was a Greek, he doesn't mean by blood. No, no. By forced conversion. Okay, come on. And in the day of the king's birth, mm. every man, they were brought by bitter constraint. The bitter constraint was that, let's say the, the king's birthday was on January the 25th. Every month on the 25th, mm. they, we had to celebrate the king's birthday. Really, basically, in simple terms, we had to worship the king. Go ahead. They were brought by bitter constraint mm -hmm. to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the feast of Bacchus is the feast of what? Is the feast of sex and wine. Worshipping the goddess of sex and wine. That's the feast of Bacchus. The goddess of sex, wine, and orgies. That's Bacchus. So during those days when the, the king was celebrating the, his birthday, guess what? There was orgies everywhere. 
all of them, there was drinking and all, there was a whole lot of, there was a mess. Really? The Jews were compelled to go in, to go in, in, in procession, to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Go ahead. Moreover, there went out a decree. A decree is an executive, is an executive order. That's what a decree is. A decree is an executive order. The same executive order that was given from Babylon, the great that everybody must wear masks and everybody must go under lockdown. That's an executive order. Read. Moreover, he went out a decree to the neighbor, to the neighbor cities of the heathen. The neighbor cities of the Greeks. The heathen is the Greeks here. Go ahead. By the suggestion of Petolum, you see that by suggestion of Petolum, because Petolum was the Greek king during these days. Go ahead. Against the Jews. Against us. Because we were scattered under the way we were scattered over there in Greece as slaves. Read. That they should observe the same fashion. We must observe the same fashion. What are those fashions? Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, birthdays, Bacchus. You understand? Read. And be partakers of their sacrifices. And partake in their sacrifices. Because remember when it says they are the, the same fashions. That's why today you see right there, there's a what? There's a um, fashion in Milan. Milan is the fashion capital of the world. And everybody be wanting to see that thing. It's a big event, man. They went to Paris to watch this uh, Milan Norton. That's the fashions of the Greeks, man. Because I was watching a documentary on YouTube. It's called Consumerism. Consumerism. Consumerism started in the 1500s, 15th century, which is the 1400s, during when Rome came back into power during the Renaissance. And they were telling you that, because I remember when I was in high school, there was a book that we read called The Merchant of Venice. That book was about slavery and, and selling, you know, a goods and all, and services and all of that. But it was mainly slavery, people, it was people being sold and goods being stolen and sold from our lands. So in the 14th, in the 15th century, 1400s, guess what? That's what they started in Rome, in Paris, in Italy. That's what they was pushing. So the thing of displaying wealth in public. Mm -hmm. That if you're wealthy, you have to display your wealth in public. I think I was watching it with the sisters, right? They said you have to display your wealth in public and you must dress up in a certain way. So they started to do that. From there it evolved into what? Into the mannequin being displayed on, on, on in, in the shops. Because the mannequins being displayed in the, it says, in fact, the, those merchants, that business of merchandising and marketing, that's where they come from, by the way. Marketing, consumerism, you know, they come from Rome. Because they said, the marketing actually, and this consumerism, you have to make the people believe that, basically, it must move from desire to fantasy. So fantasy must outweigh, so marketing, this merchandising and all of that is actually fantasy. So they say they're pushing fantasy more than what their basic needs and is your basic needs every day. So what they're saying, they're saying through this um, outlandish spending, uh, showing people uh, you know the, the lavish lifestyle, the shopping and all of that, shops all over, I mean, clothing shops in a row and all that, that comes from Rome. So all of that, it was to activate not your desires, not your basic needs, your fantasies. So they had to make sure that your fantasy becomes your reality. Your fantasy becomes what you think is a need. That's why it's so big now, because what? It turns into your fantasy, not your basic needs, no. Okay, it comes from wrong moment. So that's what we need in here. What when he says that we must be particulars of the same fashion. Read that again. The second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 8. Read. Moreover, there went out a decree. And not only that, they said, the, the lavish lifestyle and, and, and the, the display of wealth all over, it says it boomed during the transatlantic century. Mm. That's what they said. They said that's when it started to boom. Okay, come on. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen. Read. By the suggestion of Ptolemy. Against the Jews, well, against the Israelites, right? that they should observe the same fashion mm. and be partakers of their sacrifices. Because those are sacrifices that they are doing. That's why they are half naked. You ever seen these uh, catwalk yes, shows and all that? The people, the people, the things that the people wear when they are doing the catwalks is not something you can wear outside. Mm. So back then, that's what it looked like. But now they wear it, right? 
And whoso would not conform themselves, and whoso would not what them, would not conform themselves. Conform, conform, conform. And whoso would not conform themselves, meaning whoso would not behave, act like, speak like, dress like, eat like. The Greeks, go ahead. To the manners of the Gentiles. To the men, who are the Gentiles? The Greeks. Read. Should be put to death. You see that's why it was a forced conversion. That's why Timothy's father, they said he was a Greek. Not because by nationality, no, because he grew up in Greek customs. He had to conform to the fashions and the customs of the Greeks. Go ahead. Then the man have seen the present misery. Because the present means what was the present misery? False conversion. You understand? Because this is what was taking place here during the time of the Greeks. Okay. Now go back. Acts 16 verse 1. Verse 3, Acts 16, verse 3. The book of Acts chapter 16, verse 3. Ray. He would Paul have to go forth with. To go forth to, to go forth with him. Mm. And took and circumcised him. And did what now? And took and circumcised him. And the reason why the apostle Paul had to circumcise Timothy was because his father didn't circumcise Timothy. The reason for that is this. Go back to first Maccabees. Let me touch on this. First Maccabees chapter 1. Some of you is we refrain, we refreshing your memory here. Okay? First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Watch this. This is during the time when Antiochus was ruling. Okay, come on. The first book of Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Watch this. Yeah, first Maccabees 1, verse 41. So, what we want to go over here is I'm going to show you the reason why Timothy's father did not circumcise Timothy. Okay? First Maccabees 1 41. The first book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41. Watch this. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom mm -hmm. that all should be one people. All should be one people. This is the birth of democracy. Here. This is Athens. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his law. Because which people came with laws? Which people had laws? It's us. So when he says, oh, everyone should leave his laws, who was he targeting? The Israelites. Read. So all the heathen agreed. They all agree. Meaning all the other nations, they agreed with this. Like they agreed back then, they agree today. Still under the white man's rule. Back then, it was, this was the white man rule. Now we're still under the same people that was ruling us back then during the time of the Greeks. Okay, come on. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. You see that they agreed according to the commandment of the king. Go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites. Many also of the Israelites. Go ahead. Consor consorted, consented. Consented. Consented to his religion. Meaning we agreed to the Greek religion, which is democracy and politics. Read. And sacrificed unto idols. And then we began sacrificing unto idols. Go ahead. And profaned the Sabbath. And they profaned the Sabbath. That's why we read. He says, neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Because this is what happened. Some of our people, they said, no, we don't want to keep the commandments anymore. What happens in Greece stays in Greece. You see what I'm saying? Verse 48, watch this. Verse 48. Uh -huh. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. There it is. So Timothy's father didn't circumcise Timothy because it was the law of the Greeks. It was against the law of the Greeks for us to circumcise our children. Read. And make their souls abominable. You see that? Because circumcision... It's a covenant that the Lord made with our forefather Abraham. The circumcision of your flesh, not only that, but the circumcision of your mind. Go ahead. Make their souls abominable. That's why it says you, their souls abominable. Read. With all manner of uncleanness uh -huh. and profanation. You see that? That's it right there. So go back now. Acts 16 verse 3. Acts chapter 16 verse 3. Watch this. He would Paul have to go forth with him. And took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those corners. Read. For they knew all that his father was a Greek. You see that? That his father grew up in Greek customs. You understand? He was he went through forced conversion. Okay. Now read Acts 17. Now read verse 4. Now. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse 4. Because he basically he was Hellenized. That's what happened to Timothy's father. He was Hellenized. Okay, come on. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas. Read. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude. So these devout Greeks is talking about Israelites that grew up in Greek customs.
So when it says devout Greeks, meaning what? Israelites that grew up in Greek customs, they began to believe what the Apostle Paul was teaching. Read. They began to repent. Go ahead. And of the chief women, not a few. You know what it means when it says chief women? The age women. The chief women, not a few, is the age women in Titus 2, verse 3. Now read verse 7. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Because I know some of you forgot already why we get we why we coming here. Remember, it says of all time, the all the holy women also who trusted in God. Read. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Because this was in Berea now. Go ahead. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. You see that they received the word of God with all readiness of they were ready to change. Read. And search the scriptures they you see you, what did they do? Search the, the scriptures they so these chief women meaning the aged women they search the scriptures they they studied on a daily basis. Come on. Whether those things were so were those things that Paul and Silas was teaching if they was true. Go ahead. Therefore, many of them believed. Many of them believed in Berea. Go ahead. Also of honorable women. Of what now? Of honorable women. Those honorable women is the chief women, the aged women. Right? Which were Greeks. Which were what? Which were Greeks. They grew up, they also grew up in Greek customs. Come on. And of men, not a few. You see, meaning many people believe, including the women, the older women. So what made these women honorable? They search the scriptures daily. What made them holy? They search the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so. That's what made them honorable, that's what made them holy, that's what made them virtuous women. You understand? So go back. Titus 2. No, 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3 verse 5. First book of Peter chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. For after this manner in the old time, mm. holy women also. The holy women also who trusted in God. You see that? Because they searched the scriptures daily. Go ahead. Adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see that? They adorn themselves being in subject. Mean they conducted and treated and behave themselves being in subjection to their own husbands. Okay, is that it on there? Go ahead. No, sir. Even as Sarah. Even as who? Even as Sarah. Even, even as Sarah. Now before we get there, it says they what they adorn themselves being in subjection unto their own husband. Meaning that's what they live for. Because they knew their purpose on earth was a man. That's why it says they adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husband. So when they were not married, they were in subjection to their own. Their father. Jump up to verse 1. Watch this. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 1. We're going into when it says they adorned themselves being in subjection to their own husband. We're going deep into it. Come on. Likewise. You wives, you wives, come on. Be in subjection to your own husband. Be submissive to your own husbands in everything. Come on. That if any obey not the word, meaning you gotta become an example also. If any obey not the word, if maybe let's say your husband is not a believer, he don't believe, but he's gonna believe because he sees you be applying this book and doing what it says. Read. They also. Made without the word, without even having to read what's written in the book. Because let's say, because right now we didn't grow up in the truth. You understand? Let's say the truth comes, you are married, but you don't you don't know anything about this. Your wife hears the word on the street and she comes to you and say, Hey, did you believe this is a flyer? Hey, I have this, they told me such and such. Hey, hey, me, I want to go and check it out. The husband's like, nah, me, I'm not really into that. And the wife keeps coming. The wife watches the classes. She starts coming to the congregation and all of that. Because, but now your husband is going to believe the adventure. Because why? When now you are applying, you are being in subjection to your own husband, your own husband, even him know, without knowing what's written in the book. He just believes it by your conduct. Because you get called first, and your husband doesn't get called at that time. But she starts to notice a behavioral change, a change in your behavior. To say, wait a minute, you know my wife used to be combative. What's going on? My wife used to have a big mouth. That's, you know, it's not the same. It went from 100 to 65%. What's going on? 65% is 20%. Hmm. Hey man, give it, let me see that fly. What's, where do you go on every summer? Let me see that. You understand? You now you start to prep, you, you address him as my Lord. He's like, hmm. You see that? 
that thing? Because you see you in the scriptures, man. You believe it. Read it again this one. Because there was a this is when we we're teaching in Thessalonians. This is many years ago, man. <laughs> okay. Be this before your time, man. So the sister comes up. She says, I want to divorce my husband. That's what she said. Listen. She said, I want to divorce my husband. I'm like, sister, why do you want to divorce your husband? We're still teaching in front of the Midland court. She's like, I want to leave my husband. I'm like, sister, why do you want to do that? She says, he don't believe. I'm like, so who goes to church between you and him? She says, she's the one that goes. I'm like, sister, I got something for you. We read First Peter 3. You know, when we, we, when we read First Peter 3, she hated the best. She's like, no, but you know, I, I came to you to ask for answers to see to see if what I'm thinking was correct. I'm like, no, the law says what you're thinking is incorrect, sister. Apply the scriptures to reverence your husband. Because you know why? She listened to the pastor. Mm -hmm. She listened to single women that got divorced, and now they're like, no, we don't need no man. You understand? So you had many women in the churches that were feeding each other that garbage. So now she wanted to find an excuse to leave her husband. We read the scripture for it. Read the scripture again. Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Read. And she, by the way, she was not a young woman. She was an aged woman. She was maybe in a, you know, late 40s to 50s. And she wanted to leave her husband. Read. Likewise, he wants mm. be in subjection to your own husband. Go ahead. That if any obey not the word, if she, if any obey not the word, if your husband don't obey the word, because how is your husband gonna obey the word? Be, but because you don't obey. I get the sisters because we talk about in the Christian church now. They go to church. They say praise Jesus, praise white Jesus, Hallelujah. And guess what? They what they don't do is they don't submit themselves to their husband because these Christian feminists. They are the most disrespectful, the most unsubmissive, the most uncooperative women you will ever meet. Because we meet them all the time on the streets, man. They hate the Bible. Go ahead. That, that, if, that if any obey not the word, go ahead. They also may without the word mm. be warned by the conversation of the wives. That they may be warned by the conversation of the wives. Meaning, the way in which the, this woman now that she knows the truth, the way she's going to talk to her husband is going to change. Why? The reason why it's changed because she's learning the gospel now. She's learning how to conduct herself and all of that. She's learning, okay, I must learn my role. I must submit myself to that role. I must reverence my husband because I have not been doing it. You understand? Go ahead. While they behold your chaste conversation. Because the husband will behold your chaste conversation. What is your chaste conversation? I mean, you, you're going to open your mouth in wisdom. That's what it means, your chaste conversation. Read. Coupled with fear. Coupled with the fear of the Lord. Read. Whose adorning, mm. let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the head. Because that's what the modern woman cares about. How she looks on the outside. But inside it. You understand? Is dead man's dead man's bones. The Lord is saying, Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of the plating of the hair. He is not saying don't plate your hair. He's not saying that. He's saying don't lead with them. Read. And of wearing of gold. Because he says, and of wearing of gold. The, the apostle Peter is not saying don't put on a gold jewel. He's not saying that. Read. Oh, putting on of a pattern. He's, he's not saying don't dress to the bone. Don't. He said. He said. He didn't say don't look bad. He says look bad. Let's put it. Give me that in uh, the Apostle Paul when you read First Timothy two. First Timothy chapter two. Verse nine. First Timothy chapter two verse nine. Watch this. In like manner also. That the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So he's not saying don't adorn yourself. He's, but he's telling you how you must adorn yourself. You must adorn yourself in modest apparel. So the apostle, the apostle Paul, he wasn't saying don't dress beautiful. No, he was saying you must, but when you do dress, put on a modest apparel. Like the sisters are looking beautiful on this day. Go ahead. With shamefacedness. With shamefacedness. What is the shamefacedness? The laws of God. The laws of God is what's going to give you the spirit 
of shame. Or, wait, I cannot leave the house. Kia peri penti. Because that's what they leave the house now. Wait. Wapara tauni and then wapiri penti and then we can see through the gown. We can see through the, the, the night dress. We can see through the dress. Wapara dress is got a thin, thin material. We see underwear. Some of them don't even wear underwear. Now just pray. You see what the sisters are wearing now? They are going all out on hormones. Okay, go ahead. With shame faceness. With shame faceness. Because when you dress modestly, you're going to have the spirit of shame. Right? And so pride. And so pride. Come on. Not with pride and hair. He's not saying don't braid your hair. Go ahead. Or gold. Uh -huh. Or pearls. Or costly array. Or costly array. Go ahead. But which become a woman professing godliness mm -hmm. with good words. You see that? But he's saying this is what you must lead with. Meaning he's not saying don't dress to kill, but he's saying don't let that be how people know you by and then you have no substance. You dress beautifully, but when you open your mouth, don't, don't nobody want to hear you. Says, Sister, we want we want to listen to you when you speak as long as you don't say that. That's when we want to listen. Because as soon as you open your mouth, oh my God, no, just be quiet. So the Apostle Peter was saying, yes, you must dress beautifully, modest apart, but don't lead with them. You must also have substance. Okay, go back. First Peter. First Peter 3. The first Peter. The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. Whose adorning may it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair. Read. And of wearing of gold. Go ahead. Of putting on a part of apparel. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. You see that? So he's letting you know what's supposed to be your call. Your call is supposed to be what? That hidden man of the heart. That hidden man of the heart is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. You understand? Go ahead. In that which is not corruptible. In that which is not corruptible. Because the hidden man of the heart is the spirit of Christ in you. Okay, because that's not corruptible. First Peter 1, 23. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Watch this. Being born again. Start at verse 22. Watch this. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto, unto unfeigned love. Of the brethren. You see that? You have purified your souls, you understand, by obeying the truth. So, I meaning your spirit must be pure. You must be sober. Go ahead. See that you love one another. Uh -huh. Apply the royal law one to another. Come on. With a pure heart. With a pure heart, according to the law, read. Feel fervently. Being hot in the spirit. Read. Being born again. Being what now? Being born again. That's how you are, your mind, your soul is going to be purified. Because you are born again by obeying the truth. Come on. Not of corruptible seed. Not of corruptible seed. That is, that's why it says, let it be that hidden man of the heart. And that which is not corruptible. Come on. But of incorruptible. But of incorruptible. By the word of God. By the what now? By the word of God. Really? Which liveth and abideth forever. You see that? You see what's incorruptible? The word of God is incorruptible, man. It liveth forever. Okay? So that means your substance will live forever when you apply the laws of God. So go back to First Peter 3. Read verse 4 again. The first book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 4. Really? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Go ahead. In that which is not corruptible. You see that? Because the hidden of of the heart is the spirit of Christ in you, which is not corruptible. Go ahead. Even the ornament of meek and quiet spirit. In the evening meaning indeed, because the hidden man of the heart, let's get that in Ephesians, man. Let's get it quick. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, 16. He says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let's get the hidden man of the heart. Read it. The book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. That he would grant you According to the riches of his glory, mm. to be strengthened with the might, with the might by his spirit in the inner man. In the what now? In the inner man. The hidden man of the heart. The inner man. Go ahead. That Christ may dwell in your heart. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You see that he is the inner man. Christ is the inner man. Go ahead. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. Being rooted and grounded in the commandments of the most high God. Go back now. First Peter 3. Verse 4 again. First book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 4. Ray. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man of the heart is that inner man, Christ, that dwells in your heart by faith. Read. 
that which is not corruptible because the spirit of Christ is not corruptible come on even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit you see that because the spirit of Christ is going to give you a meek spirit a quiet spirit it's not going to give you a big mouth if you used to have a big mouth when you apply the laws of God you will quiet down you will learn your place in your role and you will fulfill it to honor and reverence your husband go ahead which is in the sight of God of great price. You see that? You see what the Lord says that the, the great price of a woman? And the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. He says that thing right there, her price is far above rubies. That's Proverbs 31 of the reading. Read it again. Verse 4. Verse 4. Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Come on. But let it be the hidden man of the heart mm -hmm. in that which is not corruptible. Read. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. You see that? The ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. The ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, those are the characteristics of a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman, she's meek, she's quiet. And that right there, the Lord says is what? In the sight of God is what? Which is in the sight of God a great price. Of great price. So that's why it says a price is far above rubies. Because she's got the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Why? Because she's got the, the, the hidden man of the heart. She's living with them. That is what the Lord is saying with some heavy stuff. Man. This is beautiful, man. Okay, now, read on. That's five now. Come on. For after this manner in the old time, mm. holy woman also. When he says after this manner, meaning from verse 1 down, that's the manner he's making reference to. After this, what manner? Verse 1 all the way to verse 4. That's the manner he's making reference to. Read. The holy women also, the holy women also, come on, who trusted in God, mm. adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Meaning they had a meek and quiet spirit. Read. Even as Sarah. Now he's giving you some examples of the age women of old. Read. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. She did what? Obeyed Abraham. So our foremother Sarah, she was an old, she was a what? She was a submissive woman. Our foremother Sarah, she was a cooperative woman. Our foremother Sarah, she understood the power of submission to her husband. Okay, come on. Calling him Lord. Calling him what? Lord. No, by his first name. Lord. No, when they are fighting, she's calling him by his first name. Lord. Just disrespecting him. Lord. Saying, when they are fighting. Lord. Lord. Calling him Lord. Come on. Whose daughters he are. Whose daughters he are. Because you are the daughters of Sarah. So let therefore, that's what you must call your husband. Lord. My Lord. You see, that's beautiful, man. My Lord. That's reverence right there. Go ahead. As long as you do well. As long as you do well. What is the doing well? Calling your husband Lord. Living with a meek and quiet spirit, which is incorruptible. Being submissive. Read. And I'm not afraid of any amazement. You are not afraid with any amazement. Because the thing that's going to make you afraid is when you go outside of this book. It's going to make you afraid as a woman because now you're not going to know your role properly. Now neither will you fulfill it. Okay, go ahead. Likewise, ye husbands. No, no, hold on. It says as, as long as you want. Verse 6. Peter chapter 3 verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are. Because you are the daughters of Sarah. Go ahead. As long as ye do well. As long as you do well. What is the world doing? The keeping of God's laws. What particular way that is he being referred to? Submission. Having, being, being, having the mindset of a wife. Even if you are not married because you are being proved to become one. Go ahead. And I'm not afraid with any amazement. And I'm not afraid with any amazement. Watch this. Give me Genesis 17, verse 6. Let's see how our foremother Sarah obeyed Abraham. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 6. Hold on. Let me see something. Yes, the age woman likewise, because that's where we are. Go back to Tyrus so we understand. Go back to Tyrus now. Tyrus 2, verse 3 again. 
Just put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. Listen to the scriptures. Come on. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The age woman likewise. The age woman likewise. So the age woman likewise of this day, 2023, what must be what, what, what must they be doing? That they be in behavior. That they be in behavior. They must conduct themselves. Come on. As becoming holiness. As becoming holiness. That's why it says, holy women also who trusted in God. We just saw that. Holy women also who trusted in God. They adorn themselves being in subjection to their own husbands. Go ahead. Not false accusers. We're going to deal with that next. But I just want, still want to deal with that they be in behavior as becoming holy. We went over that in First Peter 3. Now, give me that in Titus. None of Genesis. Because remember, the age women, they, 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 the reason why they behave that way is because why? They obey their husbands. So now, their behavior also had to be taught to the young women so that they also, when they get married, they know how to obey their husbands as well. Okay? Genesis chapter 17, verse 6. The book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 6. Now is that what I want? No, no, no. 7, 18, verse 6. Of Genesis chapter 18 verse 6 Ray. and Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah because this is when the angels paid our forefather Abraham a visit go ahead he said hmm. make ready quickly three measures of fine meat you see what he said he is going in there not to ask he is commanding our forefather Sarah what to pay you understand read knead it and, and he it. says knead it meaning bake come on knead it and make cakes upon the Upon the herb, he says, Bake it, man. Do very quick, move with the quickness. Now, let, what did she call our forefather? Jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. Is that what I want? No, verse 12. Verse 12. I'm jumping ahead now. With Genesis chapter 18, verse 12. Watch this. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am what's an old, shall I have pleasure? Is it because they were saying our forefather Sarah is going to give birth to a child? And she was like, listen, I'm old, man. Am I going to give birth to a child being old as I am? Meaning being an aged woman as I am? Read. My Lord, being, being old also. What is she calling her for, Father Abraham? My Lord, being old also. And my Lord, my Lord being old also. Are we going to give birth yet? <laughs> am I going to give birth to a child? Look at my Lord, he's old. He's going he to give me a child on this wise? Yes. Read it again, man. Verse 12. Come on, man. From Genesis chapter 18, verse 12. Go ahead. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. She laughed within herself. Read. Saying, yeah. after, after I am wet old, yeah. shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. You see that? My Lord being old also. What is that lady you know? It doesn't matter how old the man is. The man can still be able to give a woman a child. Don't mess you see, men don't have a biological job. Women do. We don't. You understand? Okay. Yeah, that's it on there. Give me Hebrews 11. The point is, our foremother, our foremother Sarah, she obeyed our forefather Abraham. She called him Lord. Okay, come on. Hebrews 11 verse 11. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 11. Remember it says the age women also that they what? They be in behavior as becoming holiness. We pray over that now. Go ahead. Through faith also Sarah mm. herself received strength to conceive seed. You see what the Lord did? The Lord gave our foremother strength to, to conceive seed. Go ahead. Through faith. So guess what? Our foremother Sarah she was a faithful woman. She had great faith. Okay, come on. To conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. You see that when she was past her age, man, she was what she was able to conceive. Read. Because she judged him, because she judged him faithful who had promised. You see that she judged him faithful who had promised. Who's that? The Lord. Okay. So she believed in the Lord. Is becoming holiness. We're giving an example here of our foremothers that had faith. So, sisters, you must have faith. A virtuous woman must have faith. Man. A tennis two woman, she must have faith. 
And our former mother Sarah, she's a perfect example for the sisters now. Okay, now, go back. Go back to Titus 2. Let's go back there. Titus 2. Read verse 3 again. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The aged woman likewise, the day being behavior, is becoming holy. We just saw a perfect example of our former mother Sarah. A perfect example of our former mother Judy. Okay, come on. Not false accused, not false accusers. Because our foremothers, these are the qualities and characteristics they have. Give me the book of Leviticus 19.16. This is what they understood. They understood this thing. Watch this. Leviticus 19. This is the law they understood. That's why it says, our foremothers were not false accusers. Leviticus 19.16. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 16. Go ahead. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among the people. You see that? Don't go up and down as a monk proposed among your people. Go ahead. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. You see that? Don't stand against the blood of thy neighbor, only monk proposed. Read. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying? Our foremothers understood this. That's why it's written in there, the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy to say, listen, I mean to Tyrus. That they must, they, the aged women must not be false accusers. They must not be gossipers. Watch this. Give me Zerach 9, verse 15. The Lord says, don't be a tail bearer. Or if you're not a tail bearer, what's the solution? This is what you must do. Zerach 9, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 15. Watch this. Let thy talk be with the wise. You see that? So our our foremothers, their communication was with the wise, other wise women that understood. Really. This is how you maintain your house. This is how you keep your husband. This is how you make sure that your marriage is always what is you the one that must bring the spark in your marriage, not your husband. It's not the job of your husband to bring the spark back. No, it's your job, sister. Your husband is a prophet, man. He's sailing all over, he's putting his life on the line. That's him being romantic. Oh, oh, That's his version of romance. Whether you're waiting for your husband to walk in the house, actually, the problem in his mouth. <laughs> A rose in his mouth, you know, sitting like this. <laughs> man, you can't make it up. Read verse 15 again. It's yes, verse chapter 9, verse 15. Read. Let thy talk be with the wise. Let your talk be with the wise. Okay, come on. No, like communication in the law of the Most High. You see that? That's why the age woman says not false accusers because what? Their talk must be with the wise and all their communication in the law of the Most High. That's going to prevent gossip and false accusations and all that. Because guess what? Women that don't do that, that have a big mouth, even mouth composing, Guess what? This is what they do. Because you see it in the classes all the time in our communities where women be pulling each other's hair. Yeah, we are not too much. Hey, what, what? You've seen that, man. You've seen the fights of women pulling each other by their hair. Watch this. Give us Rak 11, verse 9. The most said God is telling the women to, to what? Not to be false accusers, accusers to prevent this. Zerach 11 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9. Come on. Strive not in a matter that concerneth thee not. You see that? Who's got the many times? They don't, uh, they don't concern you. Don't get involved in them. Read. You sit not in judgment with sinners. You see that? Because guess what? When you get involved in that, you're sitting in judgment with sinners. Read. My son, meddle not with many matters. You see what he's saying? Don't meddle with many matters. Read. For if thou meddle much, if you meddle much in those many matters, what's going to happen? Thou shalt not be innocent. You're not going to be innocent. You're going to be guilty. Read. And if thou follow after, if you follow after those matters, what's going to happen? Thou shalt not obtain. You're not going to obtain wisdom. Read. Neither shalt thou escape by fleeing. You're not going to escape the reproach that will come after. So that's why the Lord says, listen, they must not be false accusers. They mustn't be false accusers. Give us around 26 and 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 5. Watch this. There be three things that my heart feared. Mm. And for the fourth, I was so afraid. He says, and the fourth one, I'm so afraid. I'm very afraid. Come on. The slender of the city. The slender of the city. Come on. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. You see, the toy toys, that's the gathering together of an unruly multitude. 
Watch this. Politics. Politiki. Go ahead. And a false accusation. Mm -hmm. All these are worse than death. You see that? A false accusation. That's what we're going with. That was a not false accusers. False accusation, it says, thee is worse than death. So the Lord says, there's those things he feared. Give us around 28, read verse 15. The prophet Isaiah, verse chapter 28, verse 15. Watch this. A backbiting tongue mm. had cast out, had cast out virtues. You know what? Start with 14. Let's start a part. The prophet Isaiah, verse chapter 28, verse 14. Now this is the, this is where you sisters, you don't apply this. You don't apply, you, you don't want to stop being a false accuser. Mongo Bozi, this is what the Lord says. Your man composing business, this is what he's going to do. Watch this, verse 14. A backbiting tongue. Because that's what I tell you sisters all the time. Stop talking and do the work in the kitchen. You understand? And all the time you see there's delays, sisters be gossiping. Backbiters, having a backbiting tongue. Yeah, that's just to stop. Go ahead. A backbiting tongue had disquieted men. You see that? Had destroyed men. Read. And driven them from nation to nation. What have we been doing? We've been driven from nation to nation through slavery. And part of that is because of a backbiting tongue. Read. Strong cities and it pulled down. Because guess what? A backbiting tongue of our foremother Eve destroyed the strongest city that was ever built in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. Adam's kingdom was destroyed because of our former the Eve's backbiting tongue with Satan. Strong cities, and because the strongest cities on the planet Earth is the city of Jerusalem. Yeah, the holy city. From Adam's kingdom to King David and King Solomon's kingdom. Those were strong cities, man. Read. Strong cities had it pulled down. Uh -huh. And overthrown the house of great men. You see that? So if our forefathers back by Titan destroyed their houses, their house of our forefather Adam. Adam was a great man, the son of God. Her back by Titan destroyed the kingdom. You understand? Read. A back by Titan had cast out virtuous woman. You see that? So, sisters, you can be a virtuous woman. But the minute you have a big mouth, we're going to relieve you of your duties. Yes. <laughs> you, listen, you are, you, you will be relieved of your duties. You sit over there in some corner somewhere. Some of the sisters will tell you, man, some of them have been relieved of their duties just to learn. And guess what? When they got restored, there was crying in it. Because they finally got to understand the importance of working doing the work, applying themselves, fulfilling their role. When they were removed from that, they were crying. Because they realized, oh yeah, now I see, now if I'm not doing this, therefore I'm useless. This. Yes. Read again. Because yes, chapter 28, verse 15, you will be given a yellow card at first. <laughs> then a red card will be issued. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Man. Come on. A backbiting tongue. A backbiting tongue. Cast out virtuous women. And cast out virtuous women. Read. And deprive them of their labor. There it is. You're going to be deprived of your labors because you're going to cause problems when it's time for you to labor. You're going to have a big mouth when it's time for you to. Because I get in your job because you, because when a husband, a lord, is a, is a CEO, you, the employee coming into the business, we're signing you up. That's why we have to write letters of uh, marriage. The instrument of covenant. That's the contract. <laughs> the instrument of covenant, that's the contract. And in the contract, there's stipulation of what needs to be done and how. The minute you violate the terms of the contract, of the contract we have a problem. There's going to be what? Um, disciplinary hearing. I think that's how Esau does it. In Israel, we must have counsel. That's how it's done in Israel. Some cancer will listen, will rip your hair off into the city over there. You understand? Why? Because you violating the terms of the contract now. Because you coming into the company to work for me. Now you doing some business, you becoming slothful and lazy because we just did with this last night. You becoming a sloth. You understand? <laughs> Come on, man. Read. Whoso hearkeneth unto it, you will listen to that backbiting tongue. What's going to happen? Never find rest. You're not going to find rest. 
So that's why in Titus 2, it says, not false accusers, because why? You will never find rest if you allow a backbiting tongue to be roaming around. Read. And never dwell quiet. You will never dwell quiet. Okay? So, that's it on that. That's it on that. Go back to Titus 2. Titus chapter 2. The book of Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The aged woman likewise, the day being behavior, is becoming holiness. Read. Not false accusers. Not false accusers. Don't be a false accuser. Don't be a mango boss. Pony. Go ahead. Not given too much wine. Don't be given, don't give yourself too much wine. Because you, you see sisters that get drunk, my God. That's why wine and women don't mix me. Wine and women. Listen. Because yes, when we're having feast and all that, sisters can have a, maybe wine in your but listen, you limit it. Sisters start to get too drunk and already they teach you on their shoes now. They jumping on tables, lifting up their leg. You understand? No, sisters, we don't do that in Israel, man. You stay in the spirit. Now watch this. Give me some 26 verse 8. Yes, chapter 26 verse 8. Watch this. A drunken woman. A drunken woman. Read. And they get up wrong. Because when women get drunk, they start to speak loud. They have a big mouth. They just be loud. They don't know what to do with themselves. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 8. Read. A drunken woman. A drunken woman. And a gather abroad. And a gather abroad. Because they are loud. Read. Cause great anger. They cause great anger. You ever seen, you find where a husband leaves the house with his wife. They're going out party. They're going to the club. They're going to the bash. When they come back, they are fighting. Because you know what? Their wife is now loud. All the stuff that she's been keeping in, she's going to just let them all out. You understand? Go ahead. And she will not cover her own shame. She is not going to cover her own shame. She's going to be telling you, yeah, but you brought me here. You understand? Why are you looking at other men? But you brought me here. You know, she's going to hide behind them. Not realizing more, but you're looking at other men because now you drive. You hold it. You want to have sex. You see that? It's going to be your fault. They're going to blame you, the men. They're always blaming the men for it. Eh? Now watch this. Give us around 19, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 2. Watch this. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. You see what, well, you see what happens when wine and women mix? Why do women, when they mix, they make men of understanding to fall away? They what? They lose their weights. Read. And he that cleaveth to harlot. And because you want to cleave to harlot. You ever seen back in the day? Long, long time ago. You understand? You ever seen that? Body bashing, body clapping, and all that. You know what happens? Sisters, they be drinking. Drinking matama wani And then your brothers, they are drinking also. And the brothers that want to get laid, they wait. Because now the barman, we now go to you understand? The bartender, the owner of the of the club wants to close. Because it's like, hey, there's two hours to close it. You know what happens? Now men start looking for women to take with. The one night stands. They start looking for them. And those women also, they are waiting for those men that want one night stands. When all everybody is picked as big they are pick, there's gonna be the fat ones at the counter. Waiting for that brother, for that the home other man who just wanna sleep with anything that moves. Because now he's drunk, he wants to just get the last booty or available. Because the good ones are gone, go to go. The easy code to code, the good ones are gone. The men now the the ones that are left is you know. Yeah. <laughs> the unfit ones. You understand? Who big Shirley? They'll be the ones. Okay, so read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 2. Go ahead. Why and woman will make men of understanding to fall away? Pray. And he that cleaveth to harlots will become impure. You see that? Now you guess what? Your common sense is not there at that point. <laughs> Man, you can't make it up. Come on. Give me the right chapter. Give me Proverbs 31, verse 4. Watch this. Proverbs 
15 year old, she know what it's like to lie on her back and deal with a man. 15 years old. Craziness. Come on. But wine drunken with excess mm, make a bitterness of the mind. You see that? That's why these women are bitter. Young women, they are bitter. They have no breaks. They have no limits. Eh? Go ahead. With prowling and quarreling. With prowling and quarreling, they're going to be fighting. That's why they be pulling their hair out. You understand? Pouring a uh, savannah, savannah on a woman's hair. On a woman's weed. Because when you pour savannah on a woman's weed, it just comes off. You understand? So that's why many of them, when they go out there, they leave the weed at home. They know what's going to happen out there. You understand? In the jungle out there, that weed here that you are too wrapped up, listen, they leave it at home. Because once you pour Amsterdam, if you pour Amsterdam, guess what? You got to it just goes on fire. You understand? You pour Amsterdam on a woman's weed, the smoke comes out. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but please, that's what's going on. Me what you got, man. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. You see that? Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. Really? Till you offend. You see that? That's why it says she will not cover her own shame. Really? It, dimin it diminishes strength. Uh -huh. Make it move. Because they fight. Because these women, they are so bold that they be wanting to fight with men for his photo. That's how bold they are. You understand? Because some of them be doing aerobics. She thinks sorry, she's been watching Wonder Woman. So she thinks sorry, in her drunkenness, she's the weaker vessel. She'll kick a man's teeth out. She'll be chest bumping her because she's big shirt. You understand? When she jump up, the breast go up and it hits the back. It comes back. Big shirt. Yeah. Because that breast is big through a lot. You understand? It's big through a lot, man. You ever see these sisters? We see them in the guy in our community span. We are very leggy. And you ask yourself, well, I mean, come on, sister. She's huge. We are very leggy. You understand? Who just parked? Who Coca Cola on the left? And the stuff you just be hanging, right? <laughs> so you ask yourself, yo, um, those guys have been through a lot, man. They, they cannot be, they cannot sit still. They've been through a lot. I'm saying this because that's what they show. <laughs> they are showing us these things, man. They are traumatizing us, man. You know, they are traumatized, man. Please stop it. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come on, man. Read the verse again. Ecclesiastes <laughs> chapter 31 verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 31 verse 8. Read. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool. Come on. Till you offend. Till you offend. It diminishes strength. Uh -huh. Make it wounds. And make it wounds. You see that? That's why you see your sister's finally blue eye. It's not because her husband beat. No, 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 no. Because that's where they're going to go. Yeah, you know these men. No, sister. You are punching another sister who bought you stop. You understand? They punch her in the face. She's got a blue eye. You know what she does? She's going to go and blame it on the men. That's what they do. There's a brother, he was a Uber driver. He was telling me, he's like, this one time, he transported this guy. And this guy picked up a few women on the road. Right? For, from Sporto or wherever. So now they're traveling home to his house. I think it's three of them. I think Kaloku could be a <laughs> Then they get there, right? When they get there, um, they are drunk and all of that. But well, now what they were planning to do is, they were play. They agree, or no? We're gonna do the Padanko dogs. So now, but what they wanted to do, they wanted to get more money out of it. They agreed uh, for a thousand because it was three of them. So he was doing the manage twice. Mm -hmm. Now, what he what, what what he did was he put a camera mm -hmm. to film the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So now, after they are done, the women says, "No, we want a thousand for each." So we want three thousand now. He's like, no, but we agreed for a thousand. They said, no. We want to say you raped us. You forced us because your spend is in us now. You know what he did? He took the video. He went to the police station. He got there because they took him over. They took him to the police station. He brought the camera and said, officers, listen, I know what they are saying. Here's the evidence. Just watch the whole thing. Watch for yourself. And the, 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 it was nasty what he did, but it helped him. 
But my point is, it's a jungle out there, man. You understand? So, but that, that camera saying thing, though. I'm not saying you brothers be going and No, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's a jungle out there. It's terrible out there. But the point is, these women, guess what? They'll destroy it. That's my point. Okay? Uh, what verse we have? Okay, go to Micah 2 verse 7. We're still dealing with the drunkenness, okay? To teach the young women to be sober. Okay, come on. Okay, take take Camilla to the bed over here. Okay, come on. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, Read. saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. You see that? It says, I will prophesy of thee of wine and of a strong drink. Come on. He shall even be the prophet of this people. He shall even be the prophet of these people. The point is this. The drunkenness here is not just going into beer. Women, our sisters getting drunk and all. No, no, it's also it's going beyond that. It also deals with philosophies. Sisters being drunk with that. They are not, they are not sober minded. Read the verse again. Of Micah chapter 2, verse 11. Watch this. If a man walking in the spirit falsehood to lie, falsehood and lies. Come on. Same. I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. So now what's happening is the sisters, our sisters, those that don't want to obey what the Bible is saying in Titus 2, is that they are now drunk with philosophies that they learn from their former Eve through the ages. Whom the white man is pushing throughout the earth for our sisters to learn and be separate and independent from us. So they did. You understand? So they are learning philosophies. The biggest philosophies that our sisters have learned is feminism. Feminism is the greatest, is the, is, the, is the cancer in our nation. That's what you need to understand. Go ahead. Even, oh, I believe this, sir. Micah chapter 2 verse 11. Read. If a man walking in the spirit in falsehood do lie, mm. saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. Come on. He shall even be the prophet of this people. He shall even be the prophet of these people. Which people? The women. The women. Because who's the woman's pastor? The white man. Because that's where they are learning their philosophies from. Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 24, 24. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 24, verse 24. Wait. Faint not to be strong in the Lord. No. Is that what I want? 26. Yeah. Psalm 26, 24. Last one. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 24. Come on. A dishonest woman. A what now? A dishonest woman. A dishonest woman. Go ahead. Contented. Contemned shame. Contemned shame. Meaning she will bring shame to your house. Read. But an honest woman. But an honest woman that keeps the commandment. The honest with the holy woman also. Who trusted in God. You see the difference? Read. Will reverence her husband. That's it right there. An honest woman will reverence her husband. Because an honest woman, she, she puts her trust in the Lord. And when she puts her trust in the Lord, she lends her own in the Lord. And then, guess what? She reverences her husband. But a dishonest one, she will bring shame to your house. She has a big mouth. And some of them, they don't have a big mouth, but she's passive aggressive. Because just because she doesn't have a big mouth, it don't mean she's not passive aggressive. Because she can have a, a soft speech, but she's passive aggressive. You give her something to do, she just delays. Passive aggressive. You understand? And when you ask her, what did you do such and such, she'll give you what? She'll come with an excuse. Passive aggressive. She'll have answers for why it didn't, why it wasn't done. Passive aggressive. Those ones are the worst. Those ones, those ones, they'll be singing with a song by killing me softly. That's them. They'll be singing your chorus, but what is my Peter, Peter, all the time. Killing me softly with this song. You know something? They'll kill me softly. 
those words. Because they are passive aggressive. Paul Luma of Those ones are more dangerous, man. Okay. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 or 24. Read. A dishonest woman mm. contemned shame. She contemned shame. Come on. But an honest woman reverence her husband. An honest woman. When a woman that a woman that reverences her husband, that's an honest woman. A woman that dishonors her husband in her pride, that's a dishonest woman. Read verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 26. What's this? A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Meaning a woman that reverences her husband. She will be judged wise of all. Come on. But she that dishonored him. But she that dishonors her husband. Go ahead. In her pride. In her what? In her pride. In her pride. Come on. Shall be counted ungodly of all. She shall be counted ungodly of all. Meaning she's what? She's dishonest. This is not a woman that is gonna that this is not a help meet for you. She's a pillar of salt. She's a pillar of stress. Read again verse 26. I want this verse to hit home. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 26. Read. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Come on. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride. In her what? In her pride. What is the pride? She don't want to submit. She don't want to be told what to do. She hates the instructions that have been given to her. She complains about the instructions. They are too many. They are too hard. I don't like the way it came out. The way you gave me the instruction, it, you know, it wasn't nice. That's what you're going to be hearing. You know what she's telling you? I don't want to listen to what you got to say. So I'm finding all these excuses to make you feel bad about you wanting to run your house. That's what she's telling you, man. She shall be what now? She shall shall be counted ungodly of all. She shall be counted ungodly of all. That's an ungodly woman. She don't trust in the Lord. She don't trust him. That's what you need to understand. A woman like that does not trust the Lord. She trusts herself. And neither does she don't even trust you. You understand? Okay. Give me Titus 1 verse 14. Titus 1 verse 14. Titus chapter 1 verse 14. Watch this. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Because the, those are, those are, guess what? That's feminism. What is a Jewish fable? Christianity is a Jewish fable, man. Okay. Read. And commandments of men. You see that? Jewish fables, these are commandments of men. What is that? Philosophies. You understand? Go ahead. They turn from the truth. That turn from the law. They turn you from the laws of God. Remember what we read in First Peter 2. When it says, purifying your souls by obeying the truth, being born again, uh -huh. not of corruptible seed. Go ahead. And to the pure, all things are pure. Let's understand who the pure is. Give me that in Psalms 19. Go back here. Psalms chapter 19. And to the pure, all things are pure. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Ray. The Lord of the Lord is perfect. Go ahead. Converting the soul. Ray. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Go ahead. The statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes of the Lord are right, meaning righteous. Go ahead. Rejoicing the heart. You see where you get your joy? You get your joy from the laws of God. That's why one time I said, Sometimes you say, you say, we, we find out know, the brother is always here. But when the, what is the source of his joy? Is it the law? Hmm? Or is it TikTok? Which is it? Because you find that the brother has got so much joy, you ask him, where is the source? We're not saying don't be joyous. We ask him, well, what is the source of the Where is he coming from? You, when you investigate, you shake the tree. No, it's not the laws of God, it's something else. You understand? Sister's got a joy, it's got a joyous spirit. But you find what the sister has a joyous spirit, but she don't like correction. That makes absolutely no sense. Because the joy is not from the commandments of the Mosa. It's from something else. Okay, come on. The commandment of the Lord is pure. The commandment of the Lord is what? Is pure. Is what? Is pure. Is pure. Come on. Enlightening the eyes. Enlightening the eyes. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go back now. Tell us one. Titus 1 verse 15. Watch this. Titus chapter 1 verse 15. Come on. And to the pure, 
all things are pure. Mm. And to the pure, all things are pure. The pure are those that are purified. The pure is those whose souls are is purified. Because by what? By the things that are pure. What are those things that are pure? The laws of God. Go ahead. But unto them that are defiled. Unto them that are defiled. Come on. And, um, and unbelieving. They are defiled and unbelieving. What defiles the man? Give me that in Sarah 27. I'm going to show you something. Sarah 27 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 27 verse 4. Read. As when once and sifted as you sift. When you're using a seed. Yes, okay, come on. As when one sifted with, with the seed. Uh -huh. Then it was safer. Mm -hmm. You feel tired. Go ahead. The refuse remains. The refuse means the garbage will remain. What happens when the what is the garbage equivalent to? Keep reading. So the filth of man in his talk. You see that? The filth of man is in his talk. The filth of man is in his talk. Now watch this. Give me Mark 7 15. I was just going over this thing. When I saw it, I'm like, and when I was going over this. I was overseeing the sisters exercising. I'm like, hey, come on, come on, sisters. And I'm really, I'm going over my chapters while the sisters were, were doing their workout. So that's what I that's what coming to mind now when I'm reading this. Read, come on. The book of Mark chapter 7, verse 15. Watch this. There is nothing from without a man. There is nothing from without a man. Maybe that's coming outside. Read. That enter that entering into him can uh -huh. defile can defile him. But watch what defiles a man or woman. Read. But the things which come out of him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. You see that the things that defile the man is the what? Is the refuse that remain there. The refuse that remain there. Guess what? That's what defiles the man. Meaning what? That sin that you still holding on to. That's what's dividing. That hot pocket that you still holding on to. That's what dividing. If you don't stop, we cannot get to you. You understand? So go back. Ecclesiastes chapter twenty-seven, verse four. Read. As when one sifted with the sea, mm. the refuse remained. Read. So the filth of man in his talk. You see that? So that why it says not false accusers. Because the quickest way to tell if this woman is defiled is her mouth. That's why said she will not cover her own shame and get her abroad. Then she got a big mouth. You understand? Titus 1 verse 15. The book of Titus chapter 1 verse 15. Read. Unto the pure, all things are pure. The things that are pure is the laws of God. Come on. But unto them that are defiled mm. and unbelieving, and unbe they don't believe. So somebody that don't believe, they are defiled. Read. Is nothing pure. Is nothing pure. Meaning nothing in the laws of God will be pure or appealing unto them. Read. But even their mind, their what? Their mind, their spirit, come on, and conscience, and their conscience, come on, is defiled. Is defiled. Meaning what? You cannot get to them. Go ahead. They profess that they know God. You see that? Not my God. That's what they like to say. Not my God. My God will never do that. My God will wish God in the world of the Bible. Sister, no, no, no. Because the God of the Bible, yeah, he will absolutely do that. But the God of your heart, sister, she, he will not do that day. Because they prophesy out of their own heart. Get that in Ezekiel. They prophesy out of their own heart. Ezekiel 1817. Let's get there. Ezekiel 13, verse 17. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 17. Come on. Likewise, thou son of man, mm. set thy face against the daughters of thy people. You see that? Against the women. Against our Israelite sisters. Go ahead. Which prophesy out of their own heart. Out of their own feelings. They prophesy out of their own heart. Come on. And prophesy thou against them. The Lord says we must prophesy against you. We must disagree with you when your feelings don't line up with this book. Because when you, when you want us to listen to your feelings and they go again, they take us away from the Bible, you want us to worship you. You want to prophesy. A prophetess. Hmm? The church of Thyatira. 
Jezebel's ghost. So basically, the sister wants you to worship the, the ghost of Jezebel. That's what she wants. Yeah, but when I don't care about my feelings. Okay, but your feelings are about they bring against the Bible. So what are we doing? What should we be doing? She's saying, but when I don't want to worship Jezebel's ghost. That's what she's telling you, Muslim. That's what she's telling you. Sisters, we're not saying you don't want to have feelings, but they just must line up with this. They have to line up with that say the Lord. If they don't line up with that say the Lord, you know what the sisters will activate? Remember when they say, bring the wailing women, the weeping women? They knew how to make you cry when there's funerals. They call them. It's always usually the big ones. They know how to hold a note. Yes, they know how to hold a note. They'll sing for hours, man. And then you'll be like, yeah, no. I have to cry on this one. <laughs> yes, they know how to do it, man. Okay. So go back. Titus 1, verse 15, verse 16 now again. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Come on. They profess that they know God. Uh -huh. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny. But in their action, they deny the law. Read. Being abominable. They are, they mean, they are disgusting. They're disobedient. They are disobedient. They, they don't have a, the, the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. They don't have that. Read. And unto every good work, reprobate. They cannot, they cannot be reformed. The only thing that will reform them is that to be a sweetest. The only thing that will reform that sister is her doing laps in that lake. You understand? Like Penny hates. That's the only time when the sister is going to be reformed by the lake of fire. And now we're not going to propose another thing to cool your tongue. And you know what? It says your tongue because you have a big mouth. So you'll be wanting to cool your tongue because why? You're screaming a bit. <laughs> because again, before the name of fire, you thought you, because you worship your tongue. You trust it upon your tongue, you have a big mouth, you have an answer for everything. But on that day in that lake of fire, let's see if you'll, you'll have an answer for everything. The Moses is not going to cool your tongue on that day. You understand? Neither the law, neither the prophets will do nothing for you. Because you didn't want to listen to them in the first place. You understand? Okay, go back now. Tell us. Tell us to read verse 4 now again. Okay? Tell us to the two verse 4. Okay, start to prepare those videos. Come on. Tell us to two verse 4. Watch this. That they may teach the young woman to be sober. You see that the job of the aged woman is to teach the young woman to be sober. Not to be sober, not to be drunk up with wine and all of that. Not only that, but they must not be drunk with philosophies, which is feminism. Right? To love their husbands. Not right there. To do what now? To love their husbands. We're going to spend some time here. To read it again. To what now? To love their husbands. So the job of the aged woman is to teach the young women to love their husbands. Because the job of the aged woman is to teach the young women to prioritize marriage. That's really what he's going into. They must teach the young women to prioritize marriage. Because the young women of today, because they are being taught by their mothers who are not married, but they've got different children from different men, they don't prioritize marriage. They prioritize being a baby mama, being a roundaway girl. They own them. They are there, they are there, they are there, there. You understand? So, give me that in 1 Timothy 5, verse 14. Let's start there. The first book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 14. Watch this. I will therefore that the younger woman may... Because that's the job. Who's doing that? The job of the aged woman is to teach the young women to prioritize lenyalo. To prioritize Mary. Mary. That's why it says the young women must get married. Read. Bear children. You see what happens? Bear children. Bear children. Read again. The, book, the first book of Timothy. Chapter 5 verse 14. So line up that video when it says baby mamas. Line it up. Now read it again. The first book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 14. Read. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. So the, the job of the aged woman, we went over this two weeks back with our foremother Naomi teaching Ruth the Moabite to what? To love her husband. So now here we're reading that the young the aged woman they are going to teach the young women to love their husbands. Okay, to get married. Read. 
Bear children. Bear children. Because the first thing that comes is what? Marriage. But give me Proverbs 18.22. Proverbs 18, verse 22. Watch this. It's good. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Come on. Whoso findeth a wife. Whoso what now? Whoso findeth a wife. Whoso findeth a wife. Read. Findeth a good thing. Because guess what? Remember. It says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. But the young women, for before they get married, they are being prepared to be a wife. That's why here it says what? Whoso what? Whoso findeth a wife, meaning the man when he finds you, you're already in that wife level. Before you even get married. So where are you getting the, the whole training from? Give me that in the history of Suzanne. Verse 2. Yeah, I said verse 1. History of Suzanne of verse 1. The history of Susanna verse 1. Go ahead. There dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim. Read. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, mm -hmm. the daughter of Chelsea. He took a what now? He took and took a wife. And took a what? And took a wife. Wait. You, did, you, did you did you understand what we just read? Read go back to Proverbs 18. So you catch it. The Proverbs to the 18 verse 22. Listen good. Whoso findeth a wife. Stop right there. Whoso what now? Findeth a wife. Whoso findeth a wife. Go ahead. Findeth a good thing. Now go to history of Susanna. History of Susanna. Verse 2. Uh-huh. And he took a wife. He did what now? He took a wife. Because she was already one. He took a wife. He didn't, he didn't take a woman. He says he took a wife. So this, this sister, our foremother Susanna, she was already in that wife mode. Because she was receiving home training from her what? Her parents. Go ahead. Whose name was Susanna. Uh -huh. The daughter of Chelsea. Read. A very fair woman. She was beautiful. Go ahead. And one that feared the Lord. She did what? And one that feared the Lord. They trusted in God. That's what we read in first Peter. Read. Her parents also were righteous. That's it. That's the reason why she feared the Lord. Because her parents were righteous. Come on. And taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. You see that? They taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Because the law of Moses tells you exactly what needs to take place. Give me that in Tobit. Let's read that thing, man. Tobit, read Tobit. Tobit chapter 12. Is it 12 or 7? Yeah, let's read it. Yeah, give me Tobit chapter 7, verse 12. Let's start there. The book Tobit chapter 7, verse 12. Read. Rahuel said, Rahuel said, Then take her from henceforth according to the men. Read. For thou art her cousin, mm. and she is thine. And she is thine. Come on. And the merciful God give you good success in all things. Good success in all things. That's Joshua 1 and 8. Read. Then he called his daughter Sarah. He called his daughter Sarah. Come on. And she came to her father. She did what? She came to her father. Because from her father's house, where is she going? To her husband's house. Read. And took her by the hand. Mm -hmm. And gave her to be wife to Tobiah. And gave her to be what? To be wife. To be what? To be wife. So you see that? And gave her to be wife to Tobias. Because... She was already in that mode. So when she was taken, she became a wife. She was a wife in poor paper. But on the mindset, she was already on that mode. She was already a wife because she was being taught in the house. Read. Gave her to be wife to Tobias. Read. Saying, mm. Behold, take her after the law of Moses. That's what we just read in the history of Suzanne. They taught their daughter the laws of Moses. Read. And lead her away to thy father. And lead her away to thy father. Come on. And he blessed them. And he blessed them. You, you see that thing? So from your father's house, you go straight to your husband's house. Not your boyfriend's house first. Your husband's house. Go ahead. And called, and called Edna his wife. Mm. 
and took paper and they wrote and took paper. You see that thing? The papers. Because now she's going to sign the employment contract. Read and did write an instrument of covenant. The instrument of covenant read and sealed and sealed. These are marriage papers now. You understand? So from her father's house, she went straight to her husband's house. That's what's happening here. You understand? That's how things are done in Israel. But now watch this. Go back. Do you know where we were? Yes, sir. History of Susanna. Sir. Yeah, go back there. The history of Susanna is one. Go ahead. No, verse two. Verse two. Mm -hmm. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna. Ray. The daughter of Chelsea. Come on. A very fair woman. Mm -hmm. One that feared the Lord. Come on. Her parents also were righteous. Read. And taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. You see that? And taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Now give me First Timothy 5. Go back there. First Timothy 5 is 14. So what we read in here is what? The aged women teaching the young women to prioritize marriage. You understand? The first book of Timothy chapter 5 is 14. Come on. I will therefore... That the younger women men. So the job of the young women is to get married. But before they get married, they must be taught to become, to be what? To be, have the mindset of a wife. Because today, the golden years of the young women, what, where are they spent on? They are spent on booze, condoms, you understand? Uh, ice cream, booze, some more, you understand? Decorta, Lina, Maliki, Price. And they are spent on men's bedrooms. That's what their golden years are spent on. They are not spent on them being grown to become women and become wives. No. That's not what's happening, man. Come on. Bear children. You see, that's the next thing. Bear children. So you marry before you can. Go ahead. Hide the house. They must what now? Hide the house. So that's why it says, and bear children. They must give birth because guess what? That's something that they must look forward to. To give birth. To breed more soldiers. Because that's what they are good for. Yeah, that's that's one of the main reasons why you get paid. To breed more soldiers. We need soldiers in Abidin. We need more soldiers, man. We need you to breed more soldiers. That's it. And wives. So if you are offended by that, you are in the wrong place. <laughs> We need you to bring more soldiers because we're at war. We need more soldiers. We need more boots on the ground. Okay. Read again verse 14. Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Read. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. You get married. Read. Pay children. Pay children. Guide the house. Guide the house. Look after the house. I'm going to deal with that in a second. Come on. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproach. You see that? So now, here's the thing. I'm going to break it out like this. One thing you need to understand, sisters, is this. Pay attention, men. So, the thing that you need to understand, sister, is three things. Number one is, you must understand your purpose of existence. Secondly, you must understand your role in that purpose. The third thing is, you must understand your responsibility in that role and fulfill it. Let me repeat. You must understand your purpose of existence upon this earth. Once you understand that purpose, you understand your role that goes along with that purpose. Then you will understand the responsibilities that you have to fulfill in that role. You understand? So we're going to go through that. Okay? Because the job of the age woman is to teach the young woman to prioritize marriage, to love their husbands. But in order for you to learn that, you must understand your purpose, your role, and the responsibilities that goes with it. That's how you're going to better understand how to love your husband, even before you get married. And if you're married, guess what? It's the chain on top. You understand? Now watch this. Now, play that video because I just wanted to just play the video regarding this verse right here because this sister, um, she would rather be a baby mama than a wife. She's going against this picture. And she's educated, so you can imagine. Now play the video. Do you have any kids? 
Yes, I do. I have too. So, in other words, fuck marriage, but I have kids. Um, uh, it wasn't really that. Me and their father was together as teenagers, okay. and just by the time we got to uh the marrying age, I would say by the time we were 23, 24, looking towards marriage, I was done with the relationship. Um, he cheated a lot, though. So. But, but, but you already had the kids. Yes, we already had the children, yes. So this one, so I've said this before and I'll say it again, black women, it seems like being a, being a wife is more of a big deal than being a mother. For some people, it was never that type of thing to me and maybe because of what i saw as far as being a wife you know I saw okay so women. so why don't you okay so i don't want to just assume but how old are mm -hmm. your kids 14 and i 14 and 9 yes and how old are you 33 33 yes so you had a kid at 18 and 19 years old mm -hmm. and then another one at 24 25 23 24 yes all right, so why was marriage no big deal then? Um, marriage was never a big deal on mine. I, I, I would say because I personally never, um, I think I have like commitment phobia almost. You like what? Like I have, like I have a thing with commitment. I just don't personally believe you know the vibes that people but you say, but you made a baby person, with somebody i don't see people live that lifestyle basically so so another so what see this doesn't make sense to me is man because it's like phobias and commitment you committed to this is what this woman is saying this woman is saying is like she gonna lose she's losing her life she's losing herself when she gets married but she decided no i'm gonna have two kids with the same man but getting married means basically she's saying marriage is a slave contract. That's what she's saying. I'm gonna lose my freedom if I get married. That's what she's saying. Meaning when if I get married, I I don't have anything to say. Somebody gonna be telling me what to do. I don't want to be submissive. I wanna do what I want while I'm in the marriage. And because I cannot be allowed to do what I want, therefore I don't wanna get married, but I want to a kid. So what are these kids, what are you teaching the kids? What are the kids going to be looking forward to? They're not going to obviously prioritize marriage. Play on. To be in somebody's mama until you die. Yes. What is it with women like yourself that don't seem to realize that that's crazy to us? Meaning that you, you it's all right to be a mama and struggle or, or trying to make, try to do the job of two people as one person. Well, actually, I never had to do the job as far as their dad by myself because their dad has always been present. However, um, in a single mom aspect of you know us living apart, I live you know in my separate state and live in yours. Present that doesn't mean see, difficult, the thing but is, that, okay, I never see, wanted to be. We, we get it, but we get it confused just because a child can be maintained. Uh -huh. A roof overhead, food on his on a plate, and clothes on a bag does not mean a child is being raised. The job trying to do the t job of two people means you're one person in the house. Correct. That means there's a deficit. That means you're one side. You are unbalanced. It's a female's way of looking at things with no man in the house. And as somebody who has had to try to do things on the weekend, that's not the same. Why no, that's that? not the same. However, that doesn't mean every woman. I don't. You get what I'm saying? Some women look at marriage or being a wife as a pivotal point to success and in, in life. That just never been. You sound very I've sad. never. I mean, so it's all right. To, so it's basically okay to walk around with you and kids. And so she don't see marriage as something successful. It's not an important aspect in a woman's life. Of course it is. But her degree is convincing her that that's not important, but her degree is. So her degree is her husband. Because the degree don't talk back. The degree is not going to tell you what to do. 
The women, they, our sisters, they are willing to put so much effort in education and their job, but they are not willing to do the same for the most important thing. They are purpose, because this comes back to the point I'm going to be going over. Purpose, role, and responsibility. So sisters, they don't want to do that. They don't want to live according to their purpose, the way God made them, and fulfill the role that God given them, and the responsibility that goes with them. They don't want to go through that. You understand? Mayo? And no, and no structure. No, not me and my kids and no structure. Yes, we probably should have more structure with having a father in the home. Absolutely, there's more structure, but it's okay for me to not be co to be committed to being a mother, but not being committed to being a wife. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? No, she said it is like it's good for me to be committed to be a mother, but I don't want to be committed to be a wife. So, but the thing is, there is that's why the Lord says there are the weaker vessels. Go back to First Peter three. They are the weaker vessel. First Peter chapter three. No, First Timothy. Yeah, First Peter. The apostle Peter went over this thing. Man. First Peter, First Peter, when he says they are the weaker vessel. The first vessel. The first Peter chapter three verse seven. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. You see that part right there? Because this woman had no honor. We're using it as an example because this is what the women in the world, that's how they move. And Israelite women also, some of them, they still think like that, but it's time to repent. Go ahead. Giving honor unto the wife. Because, guess what? The husband will give honor unto the wife. Read. As unto the weaker person. Because, you see, the wife, she, she's not a sober woman. This woman is not sober. Because the way she thinks is what? She said, no, I'd rather be a baby mama than being your wife. And the reason why, and I prefer it that way because I don't have to be commit myself to be a wife. Because committing herself to be a wife means she has to submit herself as a wife. And that's, she don't want it. Okay, go ahead. And being heirs together with the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So guess what? Women like this, these are dead big mothers. Because she thinks, or because she has a degree, she's got money to maintain the child. The child is going to grow up healthy and strong and balanced. No, the child is going to grow up to be a weak person. And if it's a girl, she's going to grow up to become one at home of the community. Because she'll be sleeping around because she's looking for her father. But that single woman, she don't think about that. She's only thinking about what? Getting the bag. That's all she cares about. She thinks the bag is going to raise the child. No, no, no. The Bible teaches you how to raise your child. That's why you need the age woman to teach you how to love your husband. Not only that, but how to love your children. That's why you must prioritize marriage. Because when you prioritize marriage, you're going to learn those things. Even before you get married, because you have been groomed to become a wife first. You understand? And then when you become a mother in the marriage, guess what? The age woman will also teach you how to love your child. So these are steps. The steps begin in your, in your father's house. Then you go to your, from your father's house, it's a process to go to your husband's house. When you get to your husband's house, you already know, you, you already have your wifely duties. There's just going to be specific things that you're going to be given, but the foundation is the same. You understand? Then you get, then, then you, you conceive if it be the Lord's will. You have a child. The eight women, they still must teach you how to love that child. They must still be doing, so it's a process, man. Okay. Play on. No, no, see, I get, I get that y'all want to believe that, but the, but the results are really clear. That's why the black community is at the bottom, because there's so many women that, like yourself, think, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll commit to being a mother. This is the. Listen, I now let you I speak. Don't, over, don't, 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 let me speak. And then okay. your child is 14 and 9. You don't know what it's going to be yet. You don't know until they're out of your house and realize, ever 18, what kind of people do we make? So you really don't know yet. But what we do know is the woman that came before you that have children and don't worry about marriage, do you have boys or girls? I have a son and a daughter. So you don't want your daughter to be married either? No, not that I don't want my daughter to be married. If that's what she wants to do, she can. But I never made it a priority or a thing for myself. That's just me. She says she didn't make it a priority. 
He basically she doesn't care whether her daughter gets married or not. But yet yeah, she's not making it a priority. We just read in Titus 2. We understand the sisters in the world, she don't understand this. But we're gonna use her as an example for the sisters in Israel. Because the same sister that you want looking at, she's gonna they're gonna be the same ones coming in the truth. So they need to, we need to understand how they think. So when they arrive, we we must shut down that wicked imagination so that they can apply the laws of God to understand what they will do things backwards. You understand? Okay? So she didn't teach, she doesn't want to teach her daughter to prioritize marriage. You know why? Because she didn't prioritize it. Like mother, like daughter. Okay, come on. I don't. But it was all right to I have, have not met. I have not met the man that I feel that I can commit to. Did you feel like the man you could do what? That I could commit to with the way that he acts. Just like perfect example, I could be make with your father, and we could be. Then why make so? See, ma'am, all this stuff would make sense if you wouldn't decide to make a, become a mother once or twice. And this is where I need you ladies to start listening to. Close your mouth in listen. this situation. Listen, listen, listen. This is what's wrong for the problem in the community. We got women making, saying this stuff, and y'all don't listen to the rep. This is why our community is jacked up. We got so many individual women talking about, well, you know, I don't need to, I don't, I don't know a man who can do this or that. And it's like, well, who cares? You, you're somebody's mother. And we need families. Yes, we do need families, but I do not support being a family with a male just because you have a penis does not mean you can leave. But then why have his babies? What do you want to have his babies? This is a wretched woman, man. She said, just because you have a penis, it doesn't mean you can leave. So basically, she's saying, yeah, now she has not found a man that she can be feminine to. So that means what she's telling, because obviously she's a masculine woman, you can see, she, she's interruptive. She's combative. She has the need to be right. That's why every time when he says something, she says, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. She's a disagreeable woman. You understand? So when you come in Islam, you have to learn to get rid of this type of, the woman's mind is not sober. So she's not an agreeable woman. You understand? So basically, she and she's not gonna be okay when a brother says, you know what, I'm only gonna be masculine for the right woman. So you can you, you you're okay with that, sisters? When a man says, I'm only gonna be masculine for the right woman, that be fun? No. Because that means right, he is hundred percent a son husband. So, but sisters say, but me, I'm, I'm only going to be feminine for the right man. Because that's what she just said. So, we don't see nothing wrong with that. Because it's been, it's been used so many times by the sisters who don't want to do the work to go through the pain of change. So, now when the man says, it's, it's going to be unacceptable for the man to say, I'm going to be masculine for the right woman. Even we, the men, are like, what the hell? What is he saying? But when a woman says, I'm only going to be feminine for the right man, we don't see nothing wrong with it. No, there's absolutely everything wrong with it. Because that means so that her submission has a price. Yeah, she charges for her submission. She's got a high body count, but she's going to tell you, I'm only going to be submissive to the right man. So when you do find that man that you're going to be submissive to, you understand? And when he now comes to the bed chamber, guess what? It's a kangaroo pouch. What should he do? Yeah, what must the man do? Because hmm? it's going to be a blind man in a minefield. It's a minefield, it's a mine down there. There's going to be bombs going off. You understand? Know it's a minefield. Viruses, diseases. <laughs> That's what the man going to find down there. I had, we were in love, we had children, just like people get married and they get divorced. It's the same thing. No, it's not. It is not. It is. Thing. It is not. She does what she does.
Because, you know, it doesn't matter even those that get married, they get divorced. But who's perpetrating the divorce? What's the name? In Zanzibar, is what? 69%? Yes, yeah, 69% of them. In the US, it's 80%. So we're just behind by 20%. But it's really high because 69% is 70%. 69 actually is like 10%. You understand? 69% of the women in South Africa, the black women, they are the ones that are responsible for wrecking their own home through divorces because I'm not happy. So obviously, which means what she doesn't speak, she does, whenever she speaks to her daughter, she don't speak good, she don't speak well of men. She don't speak well of men. And the son is sitting right there listening to her having a negative image and she speak bad about men. So what is the son going to look forward to? You see, this thing, that's why it says they are the weaker person. Okay, pal? The same thing, and that's the what, What's the difference? That, that is another jacked up part of, you don't even know what you, basically what you're saying is like so many women. Whether you're married or not married, it don't matter because people can divorce. Marriage is all, listen, no, 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 I don't, no, no, no. Whether we get married or not, relationships can break up. It's it's this all things are equal. It's always relative. And the problem is in our community, this is I'll show you something. This sister, she called in, right? Because she has a problem. But now she's got another sister who's sitting next to her. She's not married. She's influencing her negatively. Because why? She's afraid or if she listens to this man, she just might change the way she does things and the way she thinks. So she's gonna be left by herself. That's why she's distracted on the screen. She keeps listening to what? Another hyena. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Keep playing. This is how women think. It's no big deal. Whether you're married or not, just make the babies and, and have fractured, broken homes. Because no, I nobody set up. You. We didn't set up to have a fractured or broken home. Because well, that's what had you got. I not left the relationship, had I not left the relationship, we would still be together to this day. So you broke to like I say. I say these. I say. I say a lot of modern women but are home I wreckers. left the relationship. A lot of women are home wreckers. You wreck your own homes. I this is what we end up I'm not going to allow a man to disrespect you. We end up. A lot of women start. You can't over talk. You can't over talk. Me. You can't over talk. Me. Oh no! 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 Hell no! Right. You can't over talk me. And that's not gonna work. I've been trying to be cool, but when I start talking, you start talking. You can do that shit with your man, but you can't do that here. But you do it to her. You want to wreck your home and cool, but this is why. Our but yeah, you can take that off the screen. You listening the woman in the background? She say, but you doing that to her. You see, th this is the reason why our sisters don't get married, and the, the, those that do get married, guess who destroys their homes? Other women who are single. Because they have no discretion. I agree you're busy telling your the sisters that are not married. Number one, you are friends with women that are not married. What you want to talk about? They don't understand what it means to submit, to be submissive, to be a wife, because they are not one. You understand? Take that off the screen and put me back. Okay. So, but the point here is the sister has an enabler. So that's when you know if this woman. If she wanted to go back to the man that she had babies with and, and, and fix whatever the problems were, because the problem is that that man couldn't stand this woman. Look out, she don't even know this man, but look at the way she's talking to him. Very disrespectful, she has no decorum, she's, she's got no breaks. Anna, she doesn't, she has no shame whatsoever. So that's the reason why. You see, that that's why that she's a baby mama of two. Okay, and she's educated, she's got a PhD. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's deal with this now. Give me the book. Um, read the first Timothy 5 verse 14 again before we move on. The first book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 14. Read. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. The young women must get married because they must prioritize marriage. Who's teaching them? The aged woman. Read. Bear children. They must bear children. But you see, our today, we do things backwards. Because why? We didn't grow up in the law. But now that you are coming, you are coming in here, it's time to do what? To fix all this. Read. 
guard the house. They must guard the house. They must not be constructing. Every now and again, you see the sister on the street. Where's the children? Children didn't know that the children has not bathed. He has not eaten. Who be his own caravan? They get struck late. You understand? Wait. Give none occasion to the adversary. The adversary is east of the dead devil, the white man. Wait. To speak reproachfully. Because they speak reproachfully against the women by the way the women behave. Because what? They are independent. They are educated. They don't need no men. Now they are giving occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully through social media, uh, reality TV shows and whatnot. You understand? Now watch this. The first thing that sisters you need to understand is for you to better love, to know how to love your husband, to better fulfill your role, you must know your purpose upon this earth. What's your purpose of existence? Give me First Corinthians 11, verse 7. First Corinthians 11, verse 7. You must know your purpose for existence first and foremost. Why were you created in the first place? Corinthians chapter 11 verse 7. Watch this. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Really? For as much as he is the image and glory of God. So we are made in God's image. We are the image and glory of God. Come on. But the woman. But the what? The woman. But the woman, our sisters, read. Is the glory of the man. So that's why you are not equal to us. Because you are you are created on this earth to glorify men. Because you are the glory and the image of man. You are made in God in man's image. You are taken out of man. That's why you are called woman. Read. For the man is not of the woman. Because we don't come from you. Read. But the woman of the man. You come from us. You come from us and you were made for us. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. We were not created to serve you. Go ahead. But the woman for the man. You were created to serve us. That's your purpose upon this earth. Because be, be without a man, you're, you, don't have a, you don't have a purpose on this earth. Without us, your purpose it will not be determined. So the, the main reason why you were created was not for, for you to be independent, for you to be, able to be a partner, for you to be equal to... No, no, the only reason why you were created upon this earth, first and foremost, was for the man. So now, the sisters today, they are using their PhDs as the reason why they exist. They are using, they just get the men to be a sperm donor, they have a child, and they live for that child. But their entire existence, while they're here on earth, they completely pushed it to the side. And they think because they have a PhD, because the PhD is a man, and the child will be looked after by this PhD that she's gone. So now the child, the PhD is the father to the child they have. The PhD is the, is the husband that they could never qualify for or get because they don't want to do the work. That's why. You understand? Now give me the book of Genesis chapter 2. Read verse 18. Genesis 2 verse 18. Watch this. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The, the, the only way for the sisters to walk uprightly is for you to understand your purpose of existence. Read. From Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Come on. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Read. I will make him and help meet for him. You see that? It says, I will make man a help meet for him. A help that is good for him. He didn't say, I will make him a partner. No. He says, A help meet for him. Okay, jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. Uh -huh. and Adam gave names to all cattle, mm. to the fall of the air. To every beast of the field. Ray. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. You see that? For our forefather Adam, there was not a woman that was good for him. So the Lord says, okay, the only woman that will be good for Adam is the one that comes from him. You understand? Read. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Mm. And he slept. Go ahead. And he took one of his ribs. And close the flesh instead thereof. And close up the flesh instead thereof. Put up that picture. When the Lord created Eve out of Adam. Put it up. Because we need the people to see what's going on. The people, our people must see the visuals. Okay? You got it? Let's get it. Come on, brother. Read that verse again. Verse 21. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Read. The Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon us. He called he caused the deep sleep to fall upon our forefather Adam. A black man. Come on. And he slept. Read. And he took one of his ribs 
and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Really? And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. And brought her unto the man. Okay, read the verse again. Man. In the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Read. Really? And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Go ahead. And he slept. Read. Really? And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Come on. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. And the rib which the Lord God took from man. Come on. Made he a woman. He did what? Made he a woman. That's where Eve was created. Eve was created out of Adam. Because there was a need for Eve. So Eve was not going to be created if Adam was not there. The only reason why Eve was created was for Adam. Read. And brought her unto the man. And he was brought to the man whom she came out of. Go ahead. And Adam said, mm. This now this is now bone of my bone. Really? Flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman. She shall be what? She shall be called woman. She shall be called woman. Read. Because she was taken out of a man. Because she was taken out of man. So the only purpose of existence of the woman is for man. Your purpose is not to have a PhD. That's not your purpose upon this earth. Your purpose on this earth as a woman, your sole existence is to serve and glorify men. That's it. So now, give Ecclesiastes 7 29. Now, this is what the black woman has done working with the white man, the damn devil the Bible speaks of. Here's what happened to mess things up. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. Watch this. Lo, mm. this only have I found. Come on. That God had made men upright. God has made men to be upright. Come on. But they sought out many inventions. But you see what man has done? Man has sought out many inventions. What are those many inventions? I got a PhD. I got a master's. I'm doing my thesis. How is that going to help you get a husband sister? Because the sisters have been lied to to think we're in. Um, their education, upgrading their education, gives them, make them high value. No, sister. It doesn't prepare you to be a wife. You can do a complicated degree if you have to. It still does not put your value up. Because that thing is not going to be useful to your husband. Because that's not the reason why he was made. Your purpose why you were made on this earth was to glorify men. Your husband. You understand? Okay. Read that again, verse 29. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 29. Come on. Lo, this only have I found. Read. That God had made men upright. God had made men upright. Read. But they sought out many inventions. You see that? But they have sought out many inventions. They look for things outside of what God wanted. You understand? That's what they did to prosper in the work of their craft. When it says they sort out many inventions, women was like, no, we don't need no men. We can do this by ourselves. I'm going to show you something. Give me that in uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 3. I'm going to show you this. 2nd Ezra 3. Because Ezra, the Lord revealed this thing unto him. Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 3. 2nd Ezra chapter 3. I'll uh, read verse 8. The 2nd book of Ezra chapter 3 verse 8. Three. And every people walk after their own will. You see that? And every people walk after their own will. Read. And did wonderful things before them. Wonderful things in their eyes. Not in the eyes of the Lord, they did it. Read. Despised the commandments. And they despised the commandments of the Most High God. What is the sisters doing today? They are despising their papers upon this earth. They are denying it. They are replacing their papers with a degree. They are replacing their papers with a PhD. That's what they're doing. Okay. So now go back to Genesis 2. Read verse 28 again. Verse 23 again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Read. And Adam said, mm. This is now bone of my bones. Come on. Flesh of my flesh. Read. She shall be called woman mm. because she was taken out of man. Now watch this. This is the sole purpose of the woman's existence upon this earth. Watch the next verse. Come on. Therefore. Shall a man leave his father and his mother? Go ahead, because remember, when a man leave his father and his mother, it means he's got a what? He's got a nest. He's got a nest. I can we build. That means the man leaves his father and his mother. That means he what? He has a job and he, 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 he got a house. 
And guess what? When he marries the woman, we pay the less. Read. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. Come on. And shall cleave unto his wife. And shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. They shall be one flesh. Because why? They are one flesh. Literally. Literally, we are one flesh. Because you come out of us. So now the one flesh is talking about spiritual. One flesh. Because physically we are already one flesh. Now we have to be spiritually one flesh. That's what the Lord is going over. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Sarah 36, 25. Sarah 36, verse 25. You can take that on the screen, brothers. Sarah 36, verse 25. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 25. Come on. When no hedge is, hmm. death, when no hedge is, the death, the position is spoiled. You see, you see, when no hedge is, when there's no leader in a woman's life, then guess what? You want to be a spoiled possession. Because you are a man's possession. Some of you don't think that. You say, no, but you think you own me now and all that. Because that's feminism talking. Give me that in Sarah 26 verse 19. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 19. Come on. My son, mm. keep the flower of thy age sound. Keep the flower of thy age sound. Give me what? A sound mind. Go ahead. And give not thy strength to strangers. Don't give your strength to strangers. Your strength is your what? Is your seed. Go ahead. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession. Stop right there. When thou hast what now? When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession. What is the fruitful possession? Your, the woman. That's a, the woman is a fruitful possession. Because guess what? That fruitful possession right there, that's the wife of that person. Go ahead. Through all the field. Through all the field. Read on. Sow it with thine own seed. Sow it with thine own seed. Your own people. Come on. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. You see that? Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. So the possession here is what? The woman. A woman is a man's possession. I know, sisters, you the feminist the feminists they are preaching right now. No, sister, you are the man's possession. If you're not married, you belong to your father. You get married, you belong to your husband. You understand? Read again verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 20. Read. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession. Come on. Through all the fields. Read. Sow it with thy own seed. Sow it with your own seed. Come on. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. You must trust in the goodness of thy stock. Now, go back to Sarah 36 again. Start with 24. Read 24 and 25. If it is yet, verse 36, verse 24. Come on. He that getteth the wife. He that getteth the wife. Beginneth a possession. You see that? He that getteth the wife. Beginneth a possession. Read. Right. Because you take care of what you possess. Read. Right. A help like unto himself. Because guess what? A wife is a help meet for him. Go ahead. In the pillar of rest. You see that? So you're supposed to be the pillar of rest. Let me give you an example of that. Give me that in Sarah 26. We come back. Yep, Sarah chapter 26. Read verse. Yep, verse 22. When it says, a help meet for him and a pillar of rest. What does that mean? Watch this. Yes, verse chapter 26, verse 22. Read. No, no. Is that the one? Yes, that's the one. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 22. Watch this. And hallowed shall be accounted as a spirit. You see, a hallowed shall be counted as a spirit. You know why it's called that? Counted as a spirit. I get a spirit is your spirit that you, you, you know, you spit out. A harlot is the a heart is a girlfriend. Here today, gone tomorrow. That's a harlot. Read. And harlot shall be counted as spirit. Watch this. But a married woman. But a what now? A married woman. But a help means. Go ahead. Is a tower against death. Is a tower against death to her husband. You see that? A pit of rest. But a married woman who understands her purpose. He says, what well, that woman is a tower against death to her husband. 
when the, when the husband builds, guess what she's going to do? She's going to come behind him and support what he's building. Meaning this is a supportive woman. This woman right there, she is a pillar of rest. That's the key. Okay, go back. Chapter 36, verse 24 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Come on. He that gets the wife beginneth the possession. He that gets the wife beginneth the possession. Read. A help like unto himself. A help like unto himself. In a pillar of rest. You see that? A tower of death. You are, you are in a tower against death to her husband. That's a pillar of rest. That's what he's talking about. Read. Where no hedge is. So now, now the woman does not have a hedge. That means she don't have a man. She don't have a leader over her and over her life. Guess what? She don't have a purpose. Her purpose now is gone. When you don't have anybody ruling over you as a woman, guess what? You have no purpose of this time. Because you were made for a man in the first place. When there's no man in front of you, it's just you and other women, the church of Nigeria. Guess what? Your purposes will not be established. You are walking out of order. Go ahead. Where no hedge is. Where no hedge is, read. There the possession is spoiled. There the possession gets spoiled. You're going to be spoiled. Give me that in Colossians 2 and 8. There the possession will be spoiled. You're not going to apply Titus 2. And the women, our, our sisters in the world, they are a spoiled possession because they don't need no man. They don't want nobody ruling over them. Even when those that are married, their husband is their husband is not the head of those houses. They are the head of the house. So the, likewise, they are still spoiled even though they are married. Because their marriage is not according to that said the law. Read what you got. Of Colossians, the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Read. Beware lest any man spoil you uh -huh. through philosophy. So our sisters in the world, they are spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit. Empty lies. What are those empty lies? Feminism. 50-50. You understand? Whatever the man can do, I can do it better. That's the mindset. Come on. After the tradition of men. You see that? After the tradition of men. These are Jewish fables that we read in Titus 1. Read. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. Meaning the way the world is operating right now, which is upside down. That's how our sisters, they support them. Right? And not after Christ. And not after Christ. Because Christ teaches order. Christ teaches marriage. Christ taught us the gate. He taught us the mystery of what marriage represents. It, marriage, it represents Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. So what the sisters are doing, wanting to be the head of their husbands, even though they are married, they are not after Christ. That marriage is not the marriage that God has approved. Understand that. Until they come into the school and do that say the Lord. So, you must understand your purpose as a woman upon this earth. You must understand that thing. If you don't understand your purpose, guess what? Your life is useless. You don't have a head over you, your life is useless. You don't have a man, because a man is not optional. A man is a necessity, which is the reason why you were created in the first place. But sisters like to treat men like a man is optional. No. A man is not optional. A man is a necessity. That's it. Understand that? Okay. Now watch this. Now, let's get into the roles now. As a sister, you must understand your role. You understand, you understand your purpose. Your purpose of existence on this earth is a man. That's number one. Number two, you must know your role in that purpose. Now let's read the First Corinthians 11 and 3. Because Corinthians chapter 11 is telling Come on. But I would have you know. But I would have you know. That the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. And the what? The head of the woman is the man. That's your role. Your head is the man. The man is your head. That's why we smarter. We visionaries. We know exactly what needs to be done and how. And how long it's going to take. You sisters, you don't know that. I don't care how many engineering degrees you can do. It's not going to change the fact. You understand? It's not going to change the fact. Because I know a feminist online right now. Yeah, he's been a misogynist. Shut up, you misandrist. You know these misandrists online that hate men? Yeah. Read again the straight. Come on. Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Mm. But how do you know? That the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. Come on. The head of the woman. The head of the black woman. Come on. 
is the man. Is the black man. The hair of the black woman is the black man. The black woman today, she says she is a he. That's why it's Father's Day. They say they are the father and the mother at the same time. You see, their spirit is defiled because there is no hedge. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. Give me that in topic 8, verse 5 now. Topic chapter 8, verse 5. Now we're going into your role, which you are commanded to fulfill. You know your purpose, your purpose is a man. That's it. Because another thing that you must remember, sisters, if you say you want to get married, you know what you are saying? You are saying you want to be ruled over. Let me say that again. When you say, I want to get married, you are saying, I want, I'm ready to be ruled over. If you're not ready to do that, you're not ready to get married. You are saying you are ready to be ruled over. You are ready to be told what to do. That's what you are saying. Now read the Bible. It's crazy because, you know, my brother in the world, he actually told me this. My question. He, he said that. You know, I thought about it. I'm like, you know, he's right. He's biblical what he said. Now read the Bible. Tobit 8 verse 5. Tobit chapter 8 verse 5. Watch this. Then began Tobias to say, mm. Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers. Read. Blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Come on. Let, let the heavens bless thee and all the creatures. Read. Thou madest Adam and gave us this Eve, his wife. Stop right there. Thou madest Adam, Adam was created first. And did what now? And gave us him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. You see that? So thou madest Adam and gave him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. To be a help me for him and a pillar of rest. You see that? So that is the role of the woman. This right here, we read in the role of the woman to be a help meet for him and a stay, meaning a pillar of rest, a tower against death to her husband. Read. Thou made us Adam and gave us him Eve, his wife, for help helper and stay. Mm. Of them came mankind. Come on. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. You see that? It, this is Genesis, the repetition of Genesis here. Go ahead. Let us make unto him an ace like unto himself. You see that? A uh, help meet for him. Read. Now, Lord, I take this, I take not this, my sister, for last. So Adam didn't take Eve for last. Read. But uprightly. But uprightly, correctly. Go ahead. Therefore, mercifully ordained that we become aged together. That we may become aged together. Because this is the role of the wife. You understand? So Eve understood her role. She understood her purpose, and not only that, she understood her role until she started to mama and complain to say to her with this. Let me talk to Satan. She jumped on Satan's lap and started sucking on his nipples, and blood came out. That, listen, man, I'm telling you, man. The minute you're not walking according to this, you are sitting on Satan's lap. You understand? You're on team and mom. Team and <laughs> give us a to six. Because she understood her role. And her understanding her role, this is it. Psalm 26 and 1. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 1. Come on. Blessed is, the, blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. You see that? He's coming back. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. A virtuous wife is what? A woman that has a high moral standard. She understands her purpose. Because a virtuous woman understands her purpose of existence on this earth. That her purpose is a man. Read. For the number of his days shall be doubled. You see that the number of this man's days shall be doubled. Because when the Lord blesses this man, the wife is going to get the same blessing. That's what we started with in the beginning of the lesson, if you're paying attention. Go ahead. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. That's her role. Your job, sister, is to rejoice your husband. Man. That's your job, man. Your job is to, to bring joy to your husband. Let's give an example. Judith 12. You see, sisters have started a program called Project Judith. All praise the Lord. Project Judith. You understand? It's up and running. So, I'm going to touch on that thing. I'm going to touch on the thing, man. 
I want to touch on it. Judith 12 verse 14. Come on. Judith chapter 12 verse 14. Watch this. Then said Judith unto him, mm. Who am I now that I should gain say my Lord? You see that? Who am I now that I should gain say my Lord? Go ahead. Surely, surely, whatsoever pleaseth him. Come on, man. Don't push at the verse, man. Surely, Read verse 14 again, man. Judith, don't be messing me up. Judith chapter 12 verse 14. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, Read. Who am I now? That I should gain say my Lord? Uh -huh. Surely whatsoever pleaseth him. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. You know why he says whatsoever then? I'm going to show you why he says that. For that, give me the book of Ephesians, man. Ephesians 5. This is the black woman's scripture, man. You see, the book of Ephesians is got a black highlight in the Christian church. Surprisingly, it is not true. Ephesians 5 is 22. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 is 22. Go ahead. Wives, mm. submit yourselves unto your own husbands, mm. as unto the Lord. So you see, this is your role. You know your purpose, now we're going into your role now, that you have to fulfill. Come on. For the husband is the head of the wife. The role, again. Go ahead. Even as Christ is the head of the church. You see, the sisters have no problem Christ being the head of the church. They just don't want you to be the head of the house. Go ahead. And he is the savior of the body. You see that? But they want you to be the savior of the body. When a, when a, when a thief enters the house, they want you to get up. You understand? And deal with the thief. And you get you put in your life on the line. You might get put to death. Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. As the church, because the church is the 12 tribes of Israel. Christ is our king and our leader, our commander in chief. We are subject unto him. We are his subject. A king has subjects. Read. So let the wives be be to their own husbands. Let the wives be subject to their own husbands. Come on. In everything. Whatsoever pleases my Lord. That's what our former the Judith is saying here, man. Whatsoever pleases my Lord. That's why it says what? What did what that last part say? Let the so let the what? So let the wives be to their own husbands mm. in everything. In everything. Whatsoever pleases my Lord. You understand? Now go back. Judith 12 verse 14. Judith chapter 12 verse 14. Come on. Then said Judith unto him, mm. Who am I now that I should gaze in my Lord? Ray. Surely whatsoever pleases him, I will do speed. I will do what? I will do speed whatsoever. Now we read in Ephesians 5 24. In everything, whatsoever pleases him, go ahead. I will do speed. I will do it speedily. I'm not gonna be deep drinking. I'm not gonna be complaining and murmuring and talking back. Read. And it shall be my joy. It shall be my what? My joy. It shall be my joy unto the day of my death. Oh, praise to the most. That's beautiful, man. That's music right there. Go back to Zerah 26 verse 2. Because our former the Jews understood this. That's why she's telling you sisters, this is what you must do if you want to get a husband. You want to get a husband? Be agreeable. You want to get a husband? Be submissive. You want to get a husband? Bring joy unto him. Read. Read. A virtuous woman rejoices at her husband. Because that's your job. The job of your husband is not to make you happy. Your job is to make him happy. I know you've been taught wrong in the world. Some of sisters are preaching up in here. Why? Because you thought your, the man that you're gonna get make the man that's gonna marry you, his job is to make you happy. That's why 80% of our women they destroy their own marriages because she wasn't happy. Because she's expecting the black man that God on earth to what? To be the one making her happy. He's already doing it. The basic needs of life, he's doing that. And he's going beyond. He's going to the streets. Putting his life on the line because he's the savior of the boat. Get it? Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 2. Read. A virtuous woman rejoices at her husband. She rejoices at her husband. Come on. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. You see that? That's why this is a pillar of rest. You, If you have a virtuous woman, guess what? She will rejoice you. Not only that, but you want to fulfill the rest of your years in peace. Because this woman is a pillar of rest. A helper and stay. That's what she is. 
She cares about your well being. She cares about your your state of mind. She wants to know what's going on if you are fine, if she's doing enough. She wants to, because that's the type of woman you want, brothers. A woman that's going to say, you know, hey, do you need anything? You know, if you need anything, I'll do it. If I didn't do it correctly, let me correct. Show me how I can improve. That's the type of, this woman, she brings life with you. That's the type of woman you want. If you don't have that, you may drop. Now, watch this. We are having feathers now. Come on, verse 3. Read on. A good wife is a good portion. You see that a good wife is a good portion. He is given as a portion to them that fear the Lord. Go ahead. We shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. There it is. You see that a good wife, they even made a show on SABC3 called The Good Wife. Anybody remember that? There was a show on SABC3 called The Good Wife. And that woman hardly ever wore pants. She always wore like skirts and all that. You understand? But she wasn't the good wife. She was a career woman. She wasn't a good wife. But that's where they get it from, really. You understand? They try to recreate that with Bridgerton. You know that show, Bridgerton? And all that. Yeah, you see how they be conducted? Because Bridgerton is when we rule England. Now, but they are mixing Esau in there. They are making Esau, this woman, this Shiromite, the star of the show. And the, the, the man is the brother who now has to marry this Shiromite. But there's many sisters up in there, like Samson. Yeah, what the hell is this? Is there no women mm, that you have? <laughs> Woo, let me not go there. Judges 15, man. Now hold on. Where we at? Yeah. You see, I'm not going to this thing. You see this part right there? I was going to this whole class. I was going to this. <laughs> Come on, jump down to the stage. You see, sisters, you your job, you must understand your role man, is to delight your husband. And part of you delighting your husband, read the stage. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 13. Read. Right. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. You see, your grace delights your husband. What is your grace? Your character. Your conduct. You understand? Your softness. You soft. You are feminine. Hmm? You are not masculine. When the brother be touching, he's like, hmm. God holding another man. Are you wearing a glove or something? <laughs> you know those gloves that the men, the, you know, the blue collar men be using, Baba? Bricklayers. <laughs> that one that they wear, in that one is mm-hmm. very scratchy. You'll be forgetting that you're holding a glove. She's not soft. Because she's being in the gym, I look up busy doing two other push ups, lifting weights. I don't know what the hell sisters be doing, man. And these personal trainers, they're full of the devil, too. Because they are not helping our sisters, man. They are making our sisters more masculine in the gym. I go to the gym, you go to the, to the weight section, here's the women. What are they doing over there? They're supposed to be over there, you know, doing cardio and all of that, losing the weight. Hmm? But they are over there among the men, lifting weights. Come on, man. She's big like this. Oh, no, I want a uh, uh, Brazilian back I think that's what they be doing. Big shade on top of that bed. No, man. This 13. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 13. Read. The grace of a wife delighted the husband. You see, the Lord says, the grace of a wife delighted her husband. Hmm. Go ahead. And her discretion. And her what now? Her discretion. And her discretion. Come on. Would fetch his bones. Her discretion is what? This woman, she don't reveal things to her other sisters, what she does with her husband behind closed doors. You know those sisters that don't have no discretion? Mm-hmm. They just be sharing. And now there's a single sister sitting here like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. She's listening, she's like, mm, I'm going to get you, sucker. Mm-hmm. You understand? Read. A silent and loving woman. That's what we read in First Peter 3. The ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Read. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. So if you are loud, and you are hateful, you are a gift from Satan. Because guess what? You'll be sitting on Satan's lap. Yep. You're not sad because some sisters can be silent, but they are passive aggressive. She's a gift of Satan, too. Yes, yeah, she's a gift of Satan. Read. There is and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Put some energy in your reading. Read the statement again. Verse 14 again. 
Before Petrus Yeskas chapter 26 verse 14. Come on. In silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Ray. There is nothing so much worth as a mind when instructed. You see that there is nothing so much worth as a mind that is well instructed. Who is instructing this mind? The husband. Who is instructing this mind? The father in the house. Who is instructing this house? Who is instructing this mind? The leadership. Go ahead. A shame-faced and faithful woman mm. is a dumb place. You see that? A shame-faced and a faithful woman. Remember it says, a dishonest woman, guess what? She's a god. But an honest woman, she represents her husband. Read. And her pump and, and her continent mind cannot be valued. A continent mind meaning a chaste mind cannot be valued. Now watch this. Now, here's the thing, sisters. Let me show you some secrets up here. Sisters, here's what you need to understand. You, part of you rejoicing your husband, you must feed your husband's ego. Oh, that's a big requirement, by the way. You see, sisters, now they are preaching like robots. Part of you delighting your husband, you must feed your husband's ego. Hmm. Give me the book of First Samuel, man. You, you see, you need to investigate those things, sisters. Because, you know, you know that's why a lot, of the, a lot of our sisters, they don't get married. You know why? They, and they don't want to submit themselves. You know why they say that? They say, no, but me, I don't want to make his ego to be big. I don't want to, you know, I don't want him to have a big head. I think that's what they say. You'll be here, remember? They say, no, but uh, if I compliment him and what more, he's going to have a big head. Okay, that's fine. There's others who will do it. The cleaner woman. <laughs> That's what they she's called. It's called the cleaner woman. Because the thing that you need to find out is what does your husband, what does your husband's ego eat? Hmm. Yeah, that's what you must investigate. What does his ego eat? And are you the best group of them? Hmm. Hmm. So, these are bars, man. <laughs> he says, What what does your man's ego eat? And can you uh, be a good group of them? Because we are making noisy. So I wanted to make sure that I say it right. <laughs> what does your man's ego eat? And can you be the chef of them? Can you be chefing? Hmm? And give me cook him the food on the table? Because death in the pot. No. Your husband's ego cannot be dealing with death in the pot. What does your husband's ego eat? And can you cook that for him? For him to eat? That's a big question, doesn't it? Now let's read the scriptures. Only. The, our foremothers in the past they understood this. Yes, of course. First Samuel chapter twenty-five and one. Let's start there. First Samuel twenty-five and one. Let's start there. Let's read that there. The first book of Samuel chapter twenty-five verse one. Come on. And Samuel died, and all and, and all the Israelites were gathered together, and and lamented and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Read. And there was a man in Mo Mayo. There was a man in Mayo whose possessions were in Kamel. Were in Kamel. Come on. And the man was very great. It says this man that was in Mayo, he had great possessions. Go ahead. The man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep mm. and 1,000 goats. Read. And he was sharing his sheep in Kamel. So he was looking after his sheep in Kamel. Watch this. Now the, now the name of the man was Nabal. Nabal is the name of this man. He was wealthy. He was a wealthy man. Okay, come on. The name of his wife, Abigail. And the name of his wife was our foremother, Abigail. Go ahead. She was a woman of good understanding. That's it right there. She was a what now? A woman of good understanding. A what now? A woman of good understanding. Give me Sarah 25 and 8. Mm. It says she was a woman of good understanding. Where did she get it from? The keeping of God's laws. We what you got? So Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 8. Come on. When is him that dwelleth with the wife of understanding? You see that? It says when is him that dwelleth with the wife of understanding? Okay, come on. That had not slept with his tongue. Mm. And that had not served a man more unworthy than himself. It says and had not slept with his tongue. Now let's go back. Watch this. Keep those, in, those things in mind. Has not slept with his tongue. Go back. First Samuel 25. Read verse 3 again. 
The first Samuel chapter, the first Samuel chapter twenty-five verse thirty. Come on. Now the name of the man was Nabal. Mm. The name of his wife Abigail. Go ahead. And she was a woman of good understanding. She was a woman of good understanding. Read. And of a beautiful countenance. And of a beautiful countenance. So this was a beautiful woman, but she was beautiful and she was wise, just like our foremother Judy. Read. But the man was churlish. The man was churlish and evil in his doing. You see that? But he had a, this man was churlish. I mean, he was rude. You understand? Go ahead. And he was evil. Read. And he was of the house of Caleb. You know that? Because Caleb is the one that came out with Joshua. Joshua and Caleb. So he come from that lineage. He just be messing Judah up. Man. He's a Judahite. He just be messing Judah up. Now, this man, he obviously he had possessions and he had people that worked for him. So when you read down, guess what? The people, the David's servants, they, they helped him with his sheep. And now it was reported that actually David's servants, they helped you with the sheep and so forth. But he wasn't grateful about that. He was like, who's David? King David, man? This is what he's asking him. Let's read it. Jump down to verse... Yeah, keep going, man. Let's just keep going. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his sheep. Listen up. David sent out ten young men. David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. Meaning what? Send him greetings in my name. Go ahead. And thus shall he say to him that liveth in prosperity, mm. Peace be both to thee and peace be, and be, peace be to thine house. Meaning shalom to thine house. Come on. Peace be unto all that thou hast. Meaning everything that you have. Watch this. Read. Now I have heard that thou hast shared us. Mm. Now thy shepherds which were with us were which were with us, we heard them not. He says, We didn't hear your shepherds. Come on. Neither was they neither was they out missing unto them. Mm -hmm. All the while they were in command. He says, All the time while they were in command. Go ahead. Ask the young Ask the young men, and they will show thee. Therefore, let the young men find find favor in the in thine eyes. Read. For we come a good day. We give. Let us give. I pray thee. Come on. Give. I pray thee. Whatsoever cometh, whatsoever cometh to thine hand, and to thy servant, and to thy son David. Read. And when David's young men came, they speak to Nabal according to all those words. In the name of David and ceased. Watch this. And Nabal answered David's servant. Now listen up now. This is verse 10. Listen to what Nabal says to David's servants. Read. And said, Who is David? Stop right there. Look at the level of disrespect, man. Who is King David? Are you kidding? The mighty man, King David. I mean, King David was a mighty man, man. And this demon is the like, who's David? After all the good things, because David showed favor unto him. You understand? But he's an ungrateful fool. He's demonic. That's why his name is called Nabal in the first place. Go ahead. Read verse 10 again. The first book of Samuel, chapter 25, verse 10. Come on. Nabal answered David's servant mm. and said, Who is David? Mm. And who is the son of Jesse? You listen. Who's David? Who's the son of Jesse? Are you crazy? Read. There be many servants nowadays. That break away every man from his master. You see that? So he's saying that's what David is doing, man. They mean they be what now? They be many servants now, now a days. So David is one of those servants. That's what the Bible is saying, man. This guy was an idiot, man. Read. Shall I then take my bread and my shall I then take my bread and my waiter? And my water. And my shall I then take my bread and my water? And my flesh that I have killed for my sharers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be. You see that? He says, I don't know anything about them. Should I be doing that? The hell is this? That's what he's saying. You know, this guy was an idiot, man. King David came, you know, he was what? He had sincerity and faith up to him. He showed him favor. But look at the way the level of disrespect he had towards King David. Man. Man, you cannot make this up. Okay, read verse 14. Okay. Uh, so, Nehemiah, I want you, I need you to read. 
They knew our former mother Abigail, she's a what? She's a godly woman, and she's a woman of understanding. Go ahead. Nabal's wife, mm. saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, mm-hmm. and he railed on them. You see that he says he was rude to them. He was disrespectful. Come on. But the men were very good unto us, mm-hmm. and we were not hurt. So now, these are the servants of Nabal. They are giving reports to say, hey, listen, we were, the, the Davis men, they were with us, they helped us and all of that, but your husband, man, this damn devil. Now he's causing problems now with King David. Go ahead. Neither missed we anything, mm-hmm. as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the field. You see that now they are reporting this matter to Abigail because now they are going to listen to what they say. Now jump down. Let's read verse 23. Watch this. Sermon 25, verse 23. Mm-hmm. And when Abigail. Actually, read verse 18. Read verse 18. Verse 18. Read. Then Abigail made haste. She made haste. She's like, mm, you know what? Yeah, this is a problem. You know, let, you know what? Let's just keep reading. Read verse 16. Verse 25, verse 16. Come on. They, they were a wall unto us, both by night and day. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Watch this. Now therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master mm. and against all his household. Meaning including yourself, Abigail. Go ahead. For he is such a son of Belial. He says a son of the devil. <laughs> he is such a son of the devil. He is such a devil. Man. Read. That a man cannot speak to him. And that nobody can talk to this dude. Read. Then Abigail made haste. And took two hundred loaves mm. and two bottles of wine, Ray. and five sheep ready dressed, mm. and five measures of parch corn, and a hundred clusters of raisins, mm. and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. So now our former Abigail is like, you know what? I have to solve the problem because now smoke is coming to my house because of this damn devil I made. Now jump down to verse twenty-three now. Verse 23. Mm-hmm. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Stop right there. You see, our former Abigail, she knew how to deal. Mm. She knew how to deal, man. Mm. She knew how to she knew how to um, feed a man's ego. 
and how to calm a man down. She knew how to do it. And she didn't use it. She didn't use what the sisters are using today. No, no, no. It wasn't public. So she used her femininity to get this done. She was changed. Listen, man. Go ahead. And fell at his feet mm. and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. You see what she said? He said, Listen, let this be on me. Because she knew her husband. She says, Upon me, my Lord. You see what she's calling him? My Lord. Come on. And let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thy audience. You listen to even the manner in which she's speaking. Read. Really? And hear the words of thy handmaid. And hear the words of thy handmaid. Go ahead, watch this. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, mm -hmm. regard this man of Belial. Belial, meaning this man of the devil. Read. Even above. Mm. For as his name is, so is he. Because that is, that's what his name means. The son of Belial. The son of the devil. Read. Nabal is his name, mm. and folly is with him. You see that folly is with him, and I know my husband. Okay, go ahead. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young man of my Lord, mm. whom thou didst send. You see that? He says, I did not see, you understand, the young man of my Lord. Not talking about Nabal, no, King David. Read. Really? Now therefore, my Lord, mm. as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, mm. seeing the Lord has withholden thee, from coming to shed blood. You see what she said? He said, listen, this woman, she knew, she knew how to feed King David's evil. She knew how to do it. Sisters, part of you delighting your husband, you must know how to feed your man's evil. And now, Sister Abigail, our former, is showing you how he's done. Read. Earn from avenging thyself with thy own hand. You see that? He says, don't avenge yourself with your own hand. Meaning what? You see, don't be out, don't get out the spirit. But she didn't say you have the spirit. No, no, she didn't say that. Read. Verse 26 again. First Samuel 25, verse 26. Come on. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholding thee from coming to shed blood. You see what? She's already saying, listen, don't do it. Because it's the it's of the Lord. The Lord is withholding you. Go ahead. And from avenging thyself with thine own hand. You see that? And avenging thyself with thine own hand. Meaning, don't be doing, don't do that. Go ahead. Now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord mm. be as Nabal. You see that? So, meaning, like, let, let it be of the Lord. Meaning, let the Lord do this day. Don't get your hands dirty about this day. You see, listen, man, read. And now this blessing. Which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, mm. let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. He says, if they, I can't bear gifts mm. on this one. Go ahead. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of, the, of thine handmaid. You see, she's taking the fall. He says, in the tower against death to her husband. Mm. We just read it, man. He mm. says, she's what? She's a pit. She's a tower against death to her husband. We read it right here. Mm. Go ahead. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. You see what she's saying? She's in the spirit, man. Read. Because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. Stop right there. Listen, man. See, see, this woman, you, and not only that, you see the heavy thing about this? Our foremother, Abigail, she knew about King David. She knew what King David was capable of. She knew that King David was a man of the Lord, was a man of war, and she knew the wars. That King David was fighting at the command of the Mosa. So she understood all that. So they knew what it, Nabal obviously knew about King David. You understand? He, he was just being egotistical on this wise. Go ahead. And evil had not been found in thee all mm. thy days. You see that? Mm. And evil had, listen, man. Go ahead. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee. What verse you are? Verse 29. Okay, come on. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee mm -hmm. and to seek thy soul. Ray. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life mm. with the Lord thy God. L listen, man. She, listen, she's breathing life into him. Mm. She's feeding his ego. She knew exactly how it is done. Read on. And the souls of thine enemies, them shall be sling out mm. as out of the middle of a sling. You see that? Why is she saying this? 
Because in First Samuel 17, she knew. Because David beat Goliath. So she understood, she knew the war the King David was fighting. Mm. This, that means this sister was involved. Mm. Great. And master. it shall come to pass. Mm. When the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good he had spoken concerning thee. Mm. Meaning what? I know what the Lord has done and has said concerning you. Meaning I know the prophecies. Mm. Go ahead. And shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel. Mm. Go ahead. That this shall be no grief unto thee, no offense of heart unto my Lord, mm. either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. You see that he says, don't avenge yourself. The Lord is the one that brings forth vengeance. Read. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, mm. Then remember thy handmaid. You see that? He says when you see he says when the Lord deals well with you, remember thy handmaid. He said, Don't forget me. Because she knew the prophecies that when King David is a ruler, is a king. Okay, go ahead. And David said to Abigail, mm. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, mm. which sent thee this day to meet me. You see that thing? Mm. Now King David is even forgotten where he was yet. <laughs> <laughs> he is forgetting what I actually came here to bring war against this man. Now I'm no longer doing it. <laughs> Read on. And blessed be thy advice, mm. and blessed be thou, which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood. You see that thing right there? Man, this is beautiful, man. Read. And from avenging myself with my own hands. She's just repeating, he's repeating the thing because she, the, 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 our foremother Abigail, she was in the spirit. Don't forget it. Read. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, mm. which had kept me back from hurting thee, mm. except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely they had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light and... That by the morning light, by the morning meaning when the sun goes out. Read. By the morning light, any that peaceth against the wall. Talk about the man. When he says that peaceth against the wall, he talk about the man. Read. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, mm. and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, mm. and have accepted thy purse. Oh, praise to the most high. Mm. You see what she did? Mm. She fed his ego. She she did that thing, man. She did that thing. Now watch this. Jump down to the stage line. Samuel chapter 25 verse 39. Watch this. And when David heard that Nabal was dead. You see, because at this is of the Lord now. Mm -hmm. Read. He said, mm. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> when Nabal was dead, this is what King David said. Oh, praise the <laughs> Lord. Read. That had pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal. Mm. And had kept his servant from evil. Mm. For the Lord had returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. Go ahead. And David sent and communed with Abigail. No, she she went. She see what he sent and communed with Abigail. Commune meaning they spoke. Go ahead. To take her to him to wife. You see that thing? That makes perfect sense. Mm. <laughs> it makes because she was a virtuous woman. You understand? Go ahead. Come on. And when the servants of David will come to Abigail to come. Mm. They speak unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. What this? And she arose mm. and bowed herself on her face to the earth. Now, now, remember, what did she say? He says, don't forget that he made. Read verse 31. Read verse 31, man. <laughs> you see, this foremother, sisters, you can learn a lot from her foremother, Abigail. She knew how to feed a man's ego. Because today you'll be hearing sisters and me, 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 me give a compliment for what? Give a compliment for what? Give a compliment. That's what sisters, that's how they think, man. Me, I'm not going to stroke your ego. You sit over there, then. Sit in some corner somewhere and be quiet. Come on, read verse 31. Verse 7, chapter 25, verse 31. Read. That this shall be no grief unto thee, mm -hmm. no offense. No, no offense of heart Come on. unto my Lord. Read. Either that thou hast shed blood causeless, mm. or that my Lord had avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thy name. You see what she said? Mm. 
Then remember that he made me. Go back now. Verse 40. To a servant of the 25 verse 40. Three. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to come, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. What's this? And she arose. She did what now? And she arose. She got up. Go ahead. And bowed herself on her face to the earth. Mm. And said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. As he gave his stuff right there. Mm. Isn't that what Naomi commanded Ruth to do when he went to smith Boaz? That's the same thing. This is a blessing, man. You see, the Bible is every day, man. Go ahead. And Abigail hasted and arose. She did what now? And Abigail hasted and arose. Is it that which pleases my Lord? Yeah. That will I do speedily, and it shall be the, my joy unto the day of my death. Mm. Go ahead. And rode upon an ass mm. with five damsels of hers mm. that went after her. Come on. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. Oh, please, to your side. This is beautiful, man. So she knew how to stroke a man's ego. She knew the food that David's ego was needing, and she became that. So sisters, you want to get married? Mm. Sisters, you want to keep your husband? You better learn this thing. You better learn this thing and understand it. Okay? Yeah, that's it on that. That's it on that. Let's go back to Titus. Titus 2. No, no, Sarah 26. Sarah 26. Sarah 26. Um, read verse 2 again. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 2. Read. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. You see that? A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. Look what our former Abigail did. Our former Abigail, she was a wise and understanding woman. You understand that? She was a wise and understanding woman, man, but she most important, she knew how to feed King David's ego. She knew how to do it. So, brothers, that's what you must that's, that's the type of wife you want. You understand? And it's written in the Bible. We can prove it in the Bible. You understand? Now watch this. Now, part of you rejoicing your husband's sisters is hygiene. You see, that's the big one. Hygiene. Hygiene is part of you rejoicing your husband. Bathing three times a day. If you are doing once a day or twice, no. No. You're doing it once, oh my God. <laughs> you understand? Three times a day. If you're not doing it three times a day, my God, I can't believe it. There's death in the pot. <laughs> you must do it three times a day. Even the hallelujah during the time of problems, they knew what to do. In problems, sir. Because in problems, sir, that woman as a whole, but she knew how to keep it. She knew her hygiene practices. Man. She understood all that. Now watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 24, verse 55. This is what Abraham's servant was sent to get back to get uh forefather um, Isaac a wife. Genesis. Read that 24 verse 55. Genesis chapter 24 verse 55. Watch this. And her brother and her mother said, mm. Let the damsel abide with us a few days. Go ahead. At the least 10. After that she shall go. You see that? Because why? They wanted to purify her. They wanted to purify her even the more before she leaves. To prepare. Listen, girl, no, you can't go over there. This is what you must do. One, two, three, four, and the other. You understand? You must do this, 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 and that. You understand? But she was already ready to be a wife. She was being good to be a wife. She was a virtuous woman. She was busy. And he, he, you know what was he, was heavy about this? Let me show you something. Genesis 24, read verse 15. I'm going to show you that our former Rebecca, she was an idol. She was a virtuous woman, by the way. The proof of it is here. Read verse 15. Genesis chapter 24, verse 15. Come on. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebecca came out, mm. who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abram's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. With her what now? With her pitcher upon her shoulder. You see, she was busy. 
Our former Rebecca was a virtuous woman. That's what you need to understand. She was an idol when the servant found her. She was an idol. Read. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. Come on. A virgin. Mm. Neither had any man known her. You see that she was pure from all sin with men. Read. And she went down to the well mm -hmm. and filled her pitcher and came up. She was busy. She was busy. You understand? She didn't sit down and be idle. Come on. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water out of thy pitcher. You see that off thy pitcher. Go ahead. Of thy pitcher. Mm -hmm. And she said, Ray. Drink, my lord. And she hasted. He said, Drink, my lord. He's, let, listen to what she's saying. Because she wasn't just taught um, to reverence only her father or her husband. No. She was taught to reverence the black man, Peter. You see how heavy this is? This is some heavy stuff, man. Read. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her head mm -hmm. and gave him drink. Read. Because the, from the drink that she was carrying. Okay. Go ahead. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will throw water for the camels also mm -hmm. until they have done drinking. You see that? She was even proactive. Mm -hmm. Our former Rebecca was proactive. That's why she even said, Listen, I'm even going to water your camels that you came with. Mm -hmm. How about that? This woman was a virtuous woman, our former Rebecca. Man. You read about that in Proverbs 31. Now, um, uh, what verse we at? No, 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 no. Go back to where we were. No. Okay, let's keep moving. Give me Esther, Esther chapter 2. Give me the book of Esther. Chapter 2 verse 3. Let's start there. Because part of you delighting your husband's sisters is hygiene. That's a big one. Hygiene is also a weighty matter. Yes. It's a weighty matter. Hygiene is a weighty matter. <laughs> you understand? Because how is there? How is your husband gonna delight in you, but you are a smelly shade? Hmm? No, because hygiene goes hand in hand with fitness and exercise. You understand? When you exercise, certain things they disappear, and other people, other things are revealed for the first time in your life. For the first time in your life, it's like, whoa, that thing was there. Yeah, me, I will be looking for it. I've been looking for it because you didn't want to reveal it unto me. So now, as I said, the Lord, we have to exercise now. It was revealed in my ears. <laughs> okay, we watch God. Esther 2 verse 3. Esther chapter 2 verse 3. Come on. And that the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom. The king, this is Ahasuerus now. Xerxes. Go ahead. That they may gather together. All the fair young virgins. All the what now? All the fair young virgins. The fair young virgins. Come on. And to Shushan the palace. Mm -hmm. To the house of the women. Read. And to the custody of Hagen. The hey. king. And to the what? What verse you have? Verse 3. Okay, read verse 3 again. Esther chapter 2 verse 3. Read. And that the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom. That they may gather together all the fair young virgins. And to Shushan the palace. To the house of the women. To the house of the women in the unto the custody of Hagi. Okay, come on. And to the custody of Hagi. Read. The king's chamberlain. Mm. Keeper of the women. Keeper of the women. Mm. And let their things for purification be given them. You see that? Their things for purification. Part of you delighting your husband, you must know how to purify yourself. You must know how to cleanse yourself. You understand? You be smelling like Archer from our sisters from my life. I mean, come on, man. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 4. And let the maidens which please the king be queen instead of first. Best the devil. Read. And the thing please the king. Mm -hmm. And he did so. Jump down to verse 8. Come on. Verse 8. Read. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard. And when many maidens were gathered together and to Shushan the now, palace. Now they are gathering all the fair young virgins, the maidens, they are gathered up together. They are preparing themselves to be made to the king. Read. 
to the custody of Hagen, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, mm -hmm. to the custody of Hagen, keeper of the women. So Hagen was keeper of the women. Go ahead. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meet to be given her mm. out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. So now our foremother Esther was preferred. Her death, she was preferred. Now jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned in the second house of the women. No, 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 Eight and nine. We read nine, right? Yes, sir. Okay, verse 12. Yes, sir. Esther chapter 2, verse 12. Come on. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into the king, our Cyrus, after that she had been 12 months. How many months? 12 months. 12 months. Mm. 12 months. Remember now, she's prepping herself for the king. 12 months. You understand? 12 months. There's been a lot going on in that 12 months. Go ahead. According to the men of the women. According to the men of the women. We. For so were the days of their purification. The days of their purification needed to be. The, the, the duration of the purification process was 12 months. Read on. For so were the days of their purifications accomplished. Mm -hmm. To wait mm -hmm. six months with oil of myrrh. Mm -hmm. Six months with what now? Six months with oil of man. Because man is smells great. Man smells good. So which means well, that's what you must be chasing. Look for something that smells like man. He said, you know what? This is my goal. I want to smell like this. And guess what? It's not going to be Shazam. No. no, you must drink water, eat veggies, exercise, sweat the garbage out. That's how it's done. We're showing you this is how you delight your husband. We don't. And six months with sweet odors. And another six months with sweet odors. You see that, but now instead of the sweet smell, they shall be stink. You see that? Go ahead. And with other things for the purifying of the women. And with other things for the purifying of the women. So these other things is those oils and all of that stuff. You understand how to clean your stuff down there. How to make yourself, you know, smell good and all that. Listen, sisters, this what we need is part of you delighting your husband. It's not just being feminine. Yes, yeah, that's true. You understand? It's not just feeding that man's ego. Yes, yeah, that's true, too. It's very important, too. It's not just knowing your purpose, which are these are weighty matters, but hygiene also is part of that, too. Hygiene. You understand? That's good. That's very important. Give me Julie Chambers, too. Judith, chapter 10, verse 3. Because our foremother Judith, she was a submissive woman. Man. Not only was she submissive, but she was hygiene. She had good hygiene, a good grasp of hygiene practices. And she did that. Watch this, Judith, chapter 10, verse 3. Judith, chapter 10, verse 3. Watch this. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on. She did what, 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 what? She did what now? And pulled off. The sack cloth which he had on. She took off the uh, t shirt yam shoes. <laughs> That's what she did. She took off t shirt yam ace mahashun. That's what she did. She took it off. Because that thing, guess what? Is uh, like a sack cloth. You want to be romantic, you want to delight your husband. You Here you come. What is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How much do you hate your husband? I mean, how much do you hate your husband? Who are being skippers and taking ladies? Here we go. Steve, skippers are tropies. You cannot say, no, I'm going to delight my husband. Who are being skippers and taking ladies? Oh, come on, man. He's not going to get up, I'm telling you, man. You understand? The whole time when he's supposed to deal with you, he's thinking about Zoku. Read the three again, man. Come on. Judith chapter 10 verse 3 Ray. and put off the set cloth which he had on mm. and put off the garment of the widowhood and put off the garment of her widowhood but sisters today that she's always mourning because she, she wake up because I told the sisters I'm like listen you wake up 
You come to greet me in the morning, don't come up here burying these legs of muffins. No. Even if you didn't bath, just go and freshen up, come looking better, and then you greet in the morning. Yeah, I changed the program in the house. I don't want to see that. You come to greet you are burying, listen, man. You look like a you look like a pig with a nose ring on. Oh, oh come on, man. Read the verse again, verse 3. Judith to the ten verse three, three and put off the sackcloth which he had on mm -hmm. and put off the garments of the widow three and washed her body all over with water. You see that and washed her body all over with water. Mm. So she washed herself. Good hygiene. Six months oil of man. Mm. Mm. Sweet odors. You see, they say sweet odors and other things for the purifying of the wind. So, yeah, she didn't do it for six months. It was for more than years. She was married. Go ahead. And anointed herself with precious ointment. You see what she did? She anointed herself with precious ointment. You understand? You wake up in the morning, you smelling like le foifa. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Imagine. Who knows about that sunlight? Sunlight. The green bar soap. So many, so many orders in the Gopi can pay you to go for the green bar soap. Oh, come on, sisters. <laughs> Read verse 3 again, man. Judy to the 10 verse 3. Ray. And put off the set cloth which he had on. Mm -hmm. And put off the garments of the widow. Ray. And wash her body all over with water. Wash your behind. Ray. And anointed herself with precious oil. She had, and after that, she anointed herself with precious ointment. Read. And braided the hair of her head. Mm. And put on a tie upon. And put on a tie upon me while she put on a head wrap. Read. And put on her garments of gladness. You see that? Hey, what now? And put on her garments of gladness. No, I woke up like this. Mm. And put on her garments of gladness. You know, a sister, she's got one of the sisters. You got a gown. It's written, I woke up like this. I wasn't making this stuff. You think I'm making I'm not making this stuff up, man. Ultra Kata Ningari, she listen, she coming from a a, a big style. Like, what the hell? I woke up like this. Yeah, we see we woke up like this. You look like Paul Mahashi. Hmm? Paul Mahashi, is it? Paul Mahashi. Yeah. It's Mahashi. You understand? Oh you know. We know. And here comes a sister. The sister she leaves the house. She goes to pick up the young man from the school. She comes, so I didn't see her when she left. So she comes back. When she comes back, I'm like, sister, did you leave the house with this dress? Yes, sir. You know, she said like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, sister, you will never leave the house dressed like this. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm telling you, that what we don't join what society. I'm like, no, sister, we don't move like this. Yeah. You don't leave the house looking like this. Boy. You know, sisters just be letting themselves go. Sisters, don't let yourself go. Oh, you can imagine. You think our foremother Abigail, when she went out there, she looked like Mushoros. Boy, come on, man. She looked beautiful, man, when she went out there. So you must follow the examples of your foremothers, man. Come on. And put on a garment of gladness. Now here's another thing. Sisters, there's time for them to deal with the house and cook in the kitchen. So me, I walk in, I'm like, why are you dressed like that? You know that like, you know these hoodie, you know the hoodie thing, this uh, this hoodie things. So that what well, here's the sister. We have a man. She's wearing the hoodie thing, she's got a head wrap on, but she's wearing the hoodie, she pulled the stuff back. You know she pulled the stuff back, Gary, it's gonna get wet because she's in the kitchen. I'm like, you gotta dramatize. Like, you gotta. I mean, the elbows are out. There. I'm like, you are in the kitchen, you dress like this, you're gonna be cooking, they will be dead in the pot. Go up in there and change and dress more as even. Look proper in the kitchen. The sisters in the kitchen, the head lab is crooked. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? The wig is crooked to the side, man. She's in the kitchen. What be who move us to our phone? She walk through what? I'm like, no, sister. I go to the go to the kitchen, go to the bathroom and look at yourself. You, you're not supposed to be in the kitchen just like this. 
You have some saying, I'm like, why is such a person be walking in? He be saying, Yo, I can't believe it. Yeah, I went over there. <laughs> the sister, I couldn't recognize it until she said shalom. I'm like, oh, I'm speaking to Israel. I'm like, you understand? I'm like, come on. no, 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 sister. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Read verse 3 again. One more again. Jude, the 10th verse 3. Pray. And put off the sackcloth which he had on, mm -hmm. and put off the garments of the widow. Go ahead. And wash the body all over with water. Pray. And anoint yourself with precious ointment. Go ahead. And braid the hair of the head. And put on a tie upon it. Pray. And put on a garment of gladness, mm. where which he was clad during the life of Manasseh's her husband. You see that? So even after her husband died, she wasn't walking around looking on, feeling sorry for herself. No, no. She was looking back to the Lord. Yeah, I'm representing you. I'm representing a very precious brand here. I cannot be walking around the house looking like this. You know, Israel is, a, is, what is the greatest brand on earth. So you leave the house looking like rags of like rags of Matthew. You 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 basically destroying our ethnic image. You understand? Go ahead. And she took sandals upon her feet. Because sisters cannot put sandals on their feet. You know why they can't do it? Because one element no <laughs> They can't put on the sandal. <laughs> because the sister only like here, eh? <laughs> only no to like crow. A crow's feet. That's the eagle. You understand? She cannot be putting on sandals because what? Her feet is like a man's foot. The big foot, you know, big foot. <laughs> that nobody has money to find. Big foot. You see that big foot, man? Now, let me show you something, man. Give me that in Zerak 28. <laughs> no, Zerak uh, 26. Yeah, Zerak 26. Go back to Zerak 26. I'm going to show you something. Zerak chapter 26. Uh, read verse. Yeah, read verse 16. Remember, it says, Keep us at home. We touch him on it right now. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 16. Ray. As the sun, when it arises in the high heaven, mm -hmm. so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of the house. You see where your beauty comes from, sister? How you well you order your house. Your spiritual house and your physical house. How well you order your spiritual house and how well you order your physical house. That's what makes you beautiful. Go ahead. As the clear light is upon the holy candlestick. That's the menorah. Read. So is the beauty of the face in right age. So is the beauty of a woman's face in right age. Because if you're a virtuous woman, right, guess what? Your, 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 your face will be beautiful even in your old age. you still be looking bad to the bone. You understand? But if you're a Jezebel demon, no, you're going to drop your face demon. No, no, later, after your husband. Go ahead. Because you stressed him out, you got a heart attack, and you just don't do it. He gave up the ghost. <laughs> Go ahead, watch this, verse 18. As the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver. He says, as the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver. <laughs> this goes back to what? When they were building the tabernacle. In Exodus 28, I think it's Exodus 26, right? Let me see. Exodus 26, it might be Exodus 26. I could be wrong. Exodus 26, uh, no, I need more. Exodus 26, yeah, I think it's Exodus 26. Exodus 26, um, read verse. Yeah, read verse 13. Exodus chapter 26, verse 13. And a cubit on the one side, and a cubit on the other side of that which remaineth in the length of the curtains of the tent. Go ahead. It shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it. Jump down, jump down to verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. Uh -huh. And thou shalt make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards. You see that? He said, Thou shalt make 20 sockets of silver. Under the twenty boards, come on. Two sockets under one board for his two tenants, mm -hmm. and two sockets under another board for his two tenants. You see that? So this goes into when they were when they were constructing the mobile tabernacle. 
Jump down to verse 29. Verse 29. <coughs> and thou shalt overlay the board with gold. Watch this. They shall what now? And thou shalt overlay the board with gold. Pray. And make their rings of gold for places. And make their what? And make their rings of gold. And make their rings of gold. Come on. For places for mm. the past. You see, go ahead. And thou shalt overlay the past with gold. Mm -hmm. Now, go back. Sarah 26. Sarah 26, read verse 18. One more again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 18. Come on. As the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver. You see that? As the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver. Because it looks beautiful, man. Gold and silver. Beautiful. The most high God is showing us how things are constructed, how they are made, and how the colors are meshed up together. It looks beautiful. It looks glorious. <coughs> Read. So are the fair feet. So are the what now? So are the fair feet. Because the fair feet is that golden pillar. Mm. Read on. So are the fair feet with the constant heart. You see that? So are the fair feet with the constant heart. Because the fair feet goes into what that golden pillar and the feet goes into those sockets of silver. You understand that? So that's what it's going into here. So, so are the fair feet with a constant heart. Meaning what? Her ways are not moving. Constant heart. Fervent in the spirit, saving the Lord. So now when it says the fair feet, the sister cannot put on sandals because the feet are not fair. Like the golden sockets with the what? The golden pillars with, with silver sockets. I think when we're going over scriptures, we will show, I will show you how the, the, the tabernacle looked like and all that. Yeah, it was beautiful, it was glorious to look upon. But guess what? Here it's saying this likewise. The fair feet with a constant heart. So if your heart is not constant with the Lord, you're not going to have faith. <laughs> you're, yeah, if you are a virtue, if you're not a virtuous woman, you're griping all the time. You just depressive and all that. You know your feet are not gonna be fair. You don't gonna have beautiful feet. Therefore, you can't put on sandals. You know those chicken feet that we buy on the streets. You ever seen how it looks? That's the black woman's feet this day. Yep. It's time to repent, sisters. Now what verse we? <laughs> Mm. No, no, go back to Judy. Judy chapter 10, verse 4. Judy 10, verse 4. Let's see what it Judy chapter 10, verse 4. Go ahead. And she took sandals upon her feet. She took sandals upon her feet. You see, when you have fair feet, you can put on sandals. Go ahead. <coughs> and put about her. Her bracelet. Her bracelet. You put on your bracelet and all that, sisters, taking themselves up. Go ahead. And her chains. And her chains, sisters, and chains on their necks. Okay, come on. And her rings. Mm. And her earrings. Go ahead. And all her ornaments. Mm. And kept herself brave. She did what now? And kept herself brave. Meaning she did, listen, I'm going to dress to kill. And that's what she did. You wake up and say, I woke up like this. No, we don't want to see you like this. Dress appropriately, man. Look beautiful. Look proper. Go ahead. You're representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And kept himself bravely mm. to allure the eyes of all men that should see him. Now, okay, so, so, sisters, part of you delighting your husband, hygiene. Very important things. Wash your body all over with water. Do it three times a day. You are on your business. Do it for a year. You understand? You are on your periods and all that. Yeah. Do that thing. Here's another thing. Give me the book of Proverbs because I cannot do this without going there. I gotta go there. Proverbs 7. Proverbs chapter 7. Man. What was that? What was that? Proverbs chapter 7. <coughs> um, read verse. Read verse 15. Come on. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 15. Read. Therefore came I forth to meet thee mm. diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Come on. I have decked my bed. I have done what? I have decked my bed. I have decorated my bed. That's what you sisters are supposed to be doing, man. Deck your bed. You don't wake up in the morning and you just come out like a cat. 
Sister be jumping out of bed like a cat is coming out. Unally, there's a hole there. You see, that's where she, you see a, 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 a shape. Because this way she was sleeping. She comes out, do you see, still see the, the black candy drawing? You see? This, this is what this is where she slept. You jumping on like a rabbit. You ever seen rabbit? A rabbit you just jump out. No, sisters, we don't do that. We don't operate like that. Read again. Proverbs chapter 7 and 16. Read. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. You see that? I have decked my bed with covering of tapestry. That means this sister, what's she doing? She's taking a bed, meaning she, she don't wake up and just be leaving the stuff all over the room. Mm-hmm. She wakes up, she cleans the room, she packs up, she makes the bed look glorious. When you walk in, it's like the woman was sleeping up in there. But when you walk in, Ngaru, somebody who works in the mines. Ngaru, somebody who's working for mining. It smells stuffy, like, mm, sister didn't bath three times a day. It smells so stuffy, it's like, oh, come on, Ngaru. You are a bricklayer. You always be sweating. But you know, you are in the house all the time. You're just moving from one room to another. One minute you are cooking. But after you wake up, you walk in. Just walk in immediately after. It's like a dog died in here. No. Read on. I have kept my bed with coverings of tapestry. Mm-hmm. With carved works. With fine linen of Egypt. Watch this. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh. You see that? I have perfumed my bed with myrrh. Because you know how you perfume it? You wash the blankets. You wash the blankets because you have checked. Because the thing is, well, you, know, you know how sisters are? They're like, no, but we don't have many blankets to change your bed. We, you do. I know for a fact that you do. You have many changeable bed sheets and whatnot. And there's a washing machine. They're not using it. You're like, hey, hand me that blanket, let me sleep with it. You smell it like, what the hell? It smells like feet. Man, you cannot make this stuff. You cannot make this stuff up. I told you I'm coming for you, man. I'm coming for you. Read it again, verse 16. Verse 17. Proverbs chapter 7 to 17. Read. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, mm-hmm. aloes, and cinnamon. You see, that's how your bed's supposed to smell. May aloes and cinnamon, not feet. It smells like a daily sock. And it's not a sock here, daily sock here, my man. Mm-mm, two weeks ago. You understand? No, 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 no. Because if you don't do that, this will not happen in verse 18. Read verse 18. Verse 18. Uh-huh. Come, let us take our feet of love until the morning. You're not going to do that with your husband. How are you going to do that? You are not going to do that with your husband, man. So now, sisters, you are rehearsing. Make sure you follow the discourse, man. Read. Let us solace ourselves with love. You're not going to be able to solace yourself with love. How are you going to do that? Because you think, Hunty, the, the, the brother is enjoying it, Hunty is giving up the ghost. Because the thing is, the bracket is like, yo. Up, I'm dying here. What do you think, guys? Enjoy God. No, he's giving up the ghost. You killing the brother. You are getting soft, by the way. You killing him soft because they, of course, he's gonna be soft. <laughs> the smell will definitely just take you out the room. You're like, what the hell am I smelling? Then you die. <laughs> the smell is you died. You still complaining about the smell? Can you kill him up the ghost? <laughs> <laughs> you understand? No, sisters, it's time to repent. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You understand? That's part of you delighting your husband. You understand? That's part of you delighting your husband. Go back to Sarah 26. Sarah 26, read verse 2 again. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 2. Go ahead. A virtuous woman rejoices in her husband. A virtuous woman rejoices in her husband. Read. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. He shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Even when it comes to what? What we just read. Hygiene. You understand? Hygiene. Because the hygiene is not just you um, bathing three times a day and doing all of that, um, you know, using those, you know, uh, the, the, the oils of pear and aloes and cinnamon. No, it's also where you rest your head, where you sleep. You understand? That's what you're supposed to be doing, man. 
So sisters, I hope you understand what's coming out here. You understand? And guess what? Drink water. You know, sisters, you have to really, it's like you almost have to put a gun to your head to drink water. It's for your benefit, for you to delight your husband. You don't drink enough water, you, but you eat vegetables. And all of that, you exercise it, but you're not drinking enough water. What you, what you think about it? You still be a smellist. Smell incorporated. That's what you be working for. <laughs> Smell pitchy white meathead. Close comparison. It's a close comparison. That's the smell. It's a close because it's a close comparison. No, sister. And now, remember, it's not only winter. It's summer now. It's hot. And there's wind. What do you think we want to be smelling? Oh, come on, sisters. No? Mm-mm. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, sisters. No, 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 no. Okay. It's time to repent. Man. It's time to repent. So, so what I wanted to show you is our foremothers, they did a whole lot to become virtuous women and to leave their names up people. So you sisters must do the same thing because the blueprint is written here. We're giving you the sense in the spirit of the Lord for you to change all these things. You understand? I have been getting on the bed. There's a class called the fear of water. Up there. So now I'm dealing with you sisters. You understand? You must not be fearing alus, men, and cinnamons. Hmm? You must clean up down there, man. Not just down there, but your way you sleep too. You must do it. Give me that in song of song. You know how you're gonna be able to solace yourself in the laughs, but instead of a sweet smell. Because I'm telling you, man, if that's the case, you don't love your husband. Your husband don't wanna tell you because he don't want your feelings to be hurt. No, no, no. We say it on his behalf. <laughs> Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon chapter 4. So because that's why you drink jumping jacks. You see, jumping jacks are helpful to certain things. Jumping jacks are good to get rid of that mokawa. Because underneath that mokawa, only yeast down there. You see, because mokawa is hanging in the kitchen in the Things are hiding up in there. You open it like, whoa! Give me that to Song of Solomon 4. Verse 5. Watch this. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. Thy two breasts are like two young roofs. Mm. There are twins. There are what? There are twins. You see, one is not bigger than the other. <laughs> Go ahead. Which feed among the lilies. Because a lily is a what? Because this obviously is a metaphor. But we're going to use this for. We're not going to go deep into it. We just want to scratch the surface with this. Just to bring the point. It says, like that what? Best, verse 5, one more. So Solomon chapter 4 verse 5. Mm. Thy two breasts are like two young roofs. Right? That are twins. Mm-hmm. Which feed among the lilies. Which feed among the lilies. Because a lily is a very beautiful flower. And it smells good. A lily smells good. It says they're supposed to smell like a lily. Not the golden door. Is it golden one? <laughs> that golden is what's the name of it? <laughs> golden something. Something come in rain, some come in green. That one. No, it's not supposed to say supposed to smell like leaves. Go ahead. Until the day break. Until the day break. Meaning, so until the day break, it will be smelling like that. So now imagine the sheep there will smell good. They smell like feet. You, you're not gonna make it to the day break. You will not make it, man. You'll be dead by then. Read. And the shadows flee away. And the shadows flee away, meaning now the sun is coming out. Go ahead. I will get me to the mountain of myrrh. You see that that mountain of myrrh right there. You that mountain right there. You want to get to the mountain of myrrh, but guess what? You can't. You can't get to the mountain of myrrh because don't smell like myrrh. Instead of a sweet smell like myrrh, there shall be stink. Read. And to the heat of frankincense. You see that those are the sweet odors, man, that we read about in Esther two verse twelve. The sweet oldest. So now, how is your husband going to get to the mountain of man? How is your husband going to go to get to the heat of frankincense? He will not get there, man. You understand? Go ahead. Thou art all fair, my love. Mm-hmm. There is no spot in thee. Go ahead. Come with me from Lebanon, mm. my spouse. Ray. With me from Lebanon. 
root from the top of Aman, mm. from the top of Shinar, and Ham, from the lion's den, really? from the mountains of the leopards. Watch this. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Really? Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thy eyes, mm -hmm. with one change of thy head. Mm. Right. How fair is thy love? How fair is thy love? This is a love story also, man. Go ahead. My sister, mm. my spouse. Go ahead. How much better is thy love than how wine? Much, how much better is thy what? How much better is thy love than wine? Mm. And the smell. And the what? And the smell. And the what? And the smell. And the smell of thy ointments mm. than all spices. You see that? So, meaning naturally, this is how the sister is supposed to smell. So now we have to undo all the, the years of bad habits. Mm. You understand? Because now, little sisters, you have a new uniform, you should be glorious as ever. So now it's time to... Because it's not like the sisters are not doing these things. They're starting to snack. I don't understand what's going on. Mm. Now it's time to fix it. It's time to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm. Read that thing again, verse 10. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 10. How fair is thy love, mm. my sister, my Re? spouse? Go ahead. How much better is thy love than wine? Re? And the smell of thy ointments than all spices. Watch this. Thy lips, oh my spouse, dropped as the honeycomb. You see that? Listen, man. So if you don't brush your teeth, <laughs> what's going to happen, man? Chamul, we're going to have some problems, man. We don't. Honey and milk are under thy tongue. Mm. And the smell of their garments is like the smell of Lebanon. Mm. So, so, so that's why a former that she decked herself. She dressed beautifully. What other way society? No, no, sister. That's not happening. We're not doing that up in here. Go ahead. A garden enclosed is my sister, mm -hmm. my spouse. Mm. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. A fountain sealed day. Mm. I'll talk to the native people after this. Go ahead. Thy plants are an orchard of commodities mm. with pleasant fruits. With pleasant fruits, campfire mm. with spike nuts. We went over this when we went over the biblical detox. So, if you want to get more information of this type of spices, watch that class. Go ahead. Spike nut and saffron, mm. calamus and cinnamon, mm. with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with <laughs> all the cheap spices. Ray. A fountain of gardens. A fountain of gardens. Come on. A well of living waters. Mm. And streams from Lebanon. Go ahead. Awake, O north wind, and come down south. Blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. You see that thing? <laughs> man, this is beautiful stuff, man. That the what now? That the spices that thereof. The what? That the spices. That the what? That the spices. That the spices. So whatever flows out, it must be like spices. You understand? Go ahead. That the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. How many very people understand what's going on there? <laughs> You're not married just sitting in the corner somewhere. Now, that is why I'm going over this, man. I'm going over this to show you. This is how you are husband delights in you. This is because, listen, a wife, being a wife is a full time job. <laughs> being a wife is a full time job. Just like being a mother is a full time job, being a wife is a full time job. So I just, I, I just showed you what is it that you're supposed to be doing. I went over the responsibilities, by the way. These are the responsibilities we just went over. We went over the purpose the role and the responsibilities. So what I just went over is the responsibilities, by the way, of the wife. When you understand all that, we good to go. We roll. You understand? We roll. Go, to, go back to Titus, man. I'm almost done. I'm going to close it. Titus 2. Read verse 4 again. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Go ahead. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Really? To love their husband. We just went over there. You loving your husband is what? You understanding your purpose, your role, and the responsibilities in that role. Really? To love their children. To love their children. 
How do you love your children? You teach by your example. Is that simple? Judith 8 24. You teach by your example. You understand? That's how you love your children. You teach by your example. The responsibilities that we went over here, guess what? You can find out more about them in Proverbs 31 2. Proverbs 31 verse 10 down, yeah, you find about the rules, the responsibilities in great depth. Okay? And we went over many classes about them. I just wanted to bring out other things that I have never brought up here. Come on. Judy, chapter 8, verse 24. Ray. Now therefore, O oh brethren, mm -hmm. let us show an example to our brethren. Ray. Because their hearts depend upon us. Their hearts depend upon us. Come on. And the sanctuary, mm -hmm. and the house, and the altar rest upon us. You see that? So, our foremother Judith, she was setting an example for you sisters. She wasn't just saying things, she was doing them, and she was known for doing them. Understand that? She wasn't just saying all these things, she, was, she said them, she showed and tell and told them. Show and tell, that's what she did. You understand? Go back to Titus 2, read verse 5 now. Titus chapter 2 verse 5. Watch this. To be discreet. So, the, the job of the aged woman is to teach the young woman to be discreet. I'm going to give an example of that. Give, go back to 1 Samuel 25, verse 18 now. Read 18 and 19. When our former Abigail went to meet King David, Nabal didn't know about it. He wasn't aware. 1 Samuel 25, verse 18. Watch this. 1 Samuel 25, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of harsh corn, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. Watch this. They're not only that, but our former Abigail, I, she guess what? Because you see what we read in here? It says, uh, two hundred loaves. That means she knew how to bake. Two bottles of wine. She had a vineyard. Five sheep ready dressed. She knew how to deal with the meat. You understand? She knew how to cook. Five measures of harsh corn. She understood, she, listen, this woman was bad in the kitchen. She understood all this. You understand? And hundred clusters of raisins, guess what? That's what you read about in Song of Solomon, right? Raisins, okay? As there's the 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. She knew how to bake. She was bad in the kitchen. How did she know how to choose all this? She knew where to find the best food. And she even knew what was best for the king. That's why she, she didn't ask anybody to do. She knew exactly what to get. You understand? Go ahead. And she said unto the servant, mm -hmm. Go on before me. Uh -huh. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband about You see that? She had discretion in this context. Because she didn't want to tell the man, and the man now caused more problems. You understand? That's why. Discretion. Go back. Titus 2 verse 5. Titus 2 verse 5. Ray. To be discreet. To be what? To be discreet. Ray. Chaste. Chaste. Meaning what? This woman has a high moral standard. She's got what? Her continent mind cannot be vain. We need it early. Come on. Keep us at home. Keep us at home. Sarah 26. Read verse 16 again. Actually, yeah, read verse 15 and 16 together. We're going to deal with chaste and keep us at home. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 16. Come on. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven. It's beautiful when the sun comes up. Go ahead. So is the beauty of a good wife. The beauty of a good wife. Go ahead. In no, no. Verse, read 15 and 16 together. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 15. Ray. A shame faced and faithful woman. A shame faced and faithful woman. Go ahead. Is a double grace. Is a double grace. Ray. And her continent mind cannot be varied. You see that? Her continent mind cannot be varied. Meaning her chaste mind cannot be varied. Read. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of the house. That's why it says keep us at home. Keep us at home. Go back. Titus 2. Read verse 5 again. Titus 2 verse 5. Mm -hmm. To be discreet, chaste, Keep us at home. Read. Good. Meaning the what? 
Because they said there must be good. Just like the age women, the teachers of good things, yes, they also must be teachers of good things. Go ahead. Obedient to their own husbands. Because the young women must be taught to be obedient to their own husbands because they don't know how to do it. So they must be taught before they get a husband by the aged woman because the aged women have experience. Because the aged women, where are they living in this capital? From their husbands. You understand? Read. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Because when you are not obedient to your own husbands, the word of God is blasphemed. The word of God is blasphemed when you do and you are not obedient to your husband. So obedience is a big thing. That's submission, by the way. Obedience is a big thing because it's submission. Give me that in Zerah 36, verse 22. Ecclesiastic, verse 36, verse 22. What's this? The beauty of a woman shares the countenance. You see that the beauty of a woman shares a man's countenance. Go ahead. And the man loveth nothing better. Watch this. If they be kind. You see that if they be kindness, because that's your courage. Kindness. Read. Meekness. Meekness. Submission. The ornament of the meek and quiet spirit. Read. And comfort. And comfort. Meaning this woman will comfort her husband in his place. Not the one that says, you, you, listen, you ever seen, you, you even see it in movies, where a man goes to war, he's, a, he's in the military, he joins the special forces, they go to war, and then he comes back, he says, yo, I mean, you know, we almost got killed, you know, it was like, yeah, but who told you to go there? No, no, that's not a wife you should marry, man. That's a demon. You don't marry a woman like that because she's not going to comfort you in your distress. She's going to rock the boat instead. Go ahead. If there be kindness. If there be what? If there be kindness. If there be kindness. Meekness. Meekness. And comfort in her tongue. You see that? And comfort in her tongue. She opened her mouth with wisdom. Read. Then is not a husband like other men. You see that you're not like you're not gonna be like other men. Because right there you've got a, a pillar of rest, a tower against death. That's what a former the Abigail was. A tower against death to her husband. We read it over there in Sarah. Hey, this stuff. Yes, there's things flying up in there. Okay, go back to times. Chapter 2, verse 5. Titus chapter 2 verse 5. Ray. To be discreet, mm -hmm. chaste, keep us at home, Ray. good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blessed. That the word of God be not, be not blasphemed. Because the word of God gets blasphemed when sisters don't obey their husbands. When they don't submit themselves to their husbands, guess what? You blaspheme in the name of the Lord. That's what you're doing. Verse 25. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 11. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 11. Pray. But the younger widows refuse. Mm -hmm. For when they have gotten to work wanton against Christ. Meaning when they began to work wanton against Christ. Meaning what? They are burning now. Go ahead. They will marry. They will marry. Meaning they must get married. Because what? Their husbands died, but they were still young. So they must get married. Read. Having damnation. Because they're going to have damnation, read. Because they have cast off their first faith. Their first faith is the law, read. And we thought they learned to be idle. Because now they, they are idle because nothing is keeping them peace. You see how poor mother Rebecca when Abraham 7 came? She wasn't idle. She was busy when he found her, read. And we thought they learned to be idle. Mm -hmm. Wandering about from house to house. Because that's what you are seeing today. These young women, they are wandering from house to house. What, what are they doing? They are drinking, they are smoking happily. That's what they are doing, taking pictures, the selfies, sending them to boyfriend, but they are 16. Read. And not only idle. Not only are they idle, because idleness teaches much evil. Not only are they doing much evil, but what's happening? But 
tetras also. But they are tetras also. Big house, destroying houses, right? And busy boys. They are busy boys. That boy is busy. What is it busy with? Sex. The body is busy having sex instead of being joined to her mother's hip and learning in the kitchen how to cook, how to clean, how to run the house, how to make the bed, how to wash the, the how to wash the dishes. She must learn all that stuff. Read speaking things which they are not. Because what are they gonna be talking about? Because like if they are busy bodies, now they're speaking about things which they ought not to speak about. What is that? Sex. You understand? Comparing the lollipops. Because that's what they're doing. Pouring themselves out, having hoish conversations. You understand? So the most says we must shut that stuff down. Go ahead. I will therefore that the younger women may. That's the solution to this. The solution to the young women wandering about from house to house being busy bodies. What is the solution? I will therefore that the younger women may. The younger women get married. Read. Bear children. They must bear children because when she has a child, the minute she falls pregnant, must not make you affair. But will tell you fell out now. Because the woman who was busy, was she busy body and all that, the minute she falls pregnant, guess what happens? It, it ends the fun. Yeah, it does. It ends the fun because the child gonna keep you busy. The child gonna keep you exhausted. The child gonna keep you listen if you listen. That Moana. <laughs> listen, man. I've got three, I know. A child will keep you exhausted, man. You understand? Because that is why the age women, even in today's world, they still ask for oh, you are married. Where's the child? Where's my grandchild? Because they are trying to figure out, well, hey, do you know what you have now? Because she's we are married. Make sure this woman don't become a busy boy. Keep her busy. Make her exhausted. Have a child. Once you have a child, guess what? My child affair, she sits over there. If you want to humble her, just make her fall pregnant. Get married, make her fall pregnant, she'll sit over there. And now she has to go through the troubles of education. Because it's not just the pregnancy. No, no, it's the troubles that she has to go through to educate this child, to raise her up, him or her up. You understand that? Go ahead. I would therefore that the younger women marry. Because marriage is a full-time job. Being a wife is a full-time job. That's why sisters get married. Now, they say, I'm not happy. What do they do when the sisters don't get happy? They go, they go to school. Yes? Sisters who are not happy, where do they go? To school. Sisters who are failures in relationships, what do they do? They go to school. Go ahead. Bear children. Guess what? That's the next thing. You become a wife, now you bear children. Read. Guide the house. Guide the house, because it's another full-time job. Read. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproach. You see that? Because the reason why we preventing the adversary from speaking reproachful. That's why the young women get married, pay children, guide the house. These are, you see the responsibilities? We just went over the responsibilities. Be a wife, be a mother, guide the house. Prevent the enemy from speaking evil of us as a nation. Who's the enemy? The white man, the devil the Bible speaks of. That's how you stop the enemy from speaking reproachfully against our nation. That's how you do it. That's why marriage is honorable. Because this, the honor that marriage brings is what? Is to stop the enemy from speaking reproachfully. Ha! Huh. Marriage, motherhood, and what? Being a housewife. Yeah, that's it right there. Guide the house. He didn't say get a maid. He said guide the house. <laughs> <laughs> you carry a woman. I know you're upset right now. But that's what the Bible says. But I know sisters gonna say, but Anna, two women's wife, two women's works to do. Yeah, because Tobit was blind. That's why she took women's works to do. Yeah. But before that, Tobit was uh was at the head of the house, he was going out working, bringing the bread home. And uh, now, our foremother, she was looking after the house. You understand? So, which means, because you being 
Being a housewife, listen, man, is a big job. That's why sisters are running away from them. They want to be out there. Working for another man. Mm-hmm. When you're supposed to be working for your husband. Mm-hmm. You, you know you can't make this up, man. Just be disloyal. Listen, your husband is working. Your husband has got a job. He is a CEO of the house. Whenever you say, nah, me, I want to get, we're not saying, sister, we're not saying don't get work. We're not, that's not what we're saying. But we're saying, well, some sisters, they, that's what they prefer. They don't love motherhood. They don't love wifehood. They work, they love slavehood. They love it. They love going out there working for another man, doing the runarounds, having to upgrade their certification and all of that. Because Master Van Nicker, when I got a revenue certification, so this thing. So I went out to do it. Hey, you know you're coming home late, yeah, because we're not a okay, year. Yeah. What is the cause for? To make sure that you do better at the white man's work. But you don't want to work for your husband. You know, I would rather that you all the work that you put in to work for that white man. How about you work for me then? Work for me. Hmm? How about that? That's better. But no, she don't want to do that because you know why? Fear, scarcity, and lack. Because what if he leaves you? What if he does this? So this is my safety net. That's what they say. Because they think a decree is a guarantee. It is not. It is not a guarantee. That's why many of our sisters, they are working retail jobs. They are in the government. They've been working there for years. They cannot move up because why? They are disqualified even in the job they say they trust. So how about just work for your husband? You see that thing? We need to get the 14. First Timothy. Come on. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Ray. I would therefore that the younger women marry. Uh huh. Pair children. Ray. Guide the house. Come on. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproach. You see that? Go ahead. For some are already turned aside after Satan. You see that? Because some are already sucking on Satan's nipples. Yeah. Because what? He said, like, no, I would rather suck on Satan's nipples than work for my husband. I mean, imagine, because, yeah, you get a degree and all, that's fine. Get a degree, sister. Get education, because we encourage that in Israel. You know, because, you know, part of the reason why I'm encouraging sisters to do that, some have graduated and all of that, is, is for our benefit. So that when the people in the world, they say, yeah, but you know, they are oppressing women, they don't even want them to study. I'm like, sister, raise your hand. Who has an engineering degree? Raise your hand. You understand? Yes, you're going to raise your hand. Yeah. You see, it's vision. <laughs> vision on oh, oh, Avengers. Vision. You see vision with the thing on the forehead? Yeah, vision. Vision. You understand? Yeah, we stop him all that. So the day your husband gets blind, you can take your engineering degree and go and, you know, because of that good name of mine, you get a quick job. You get a referral. You, you call, not, not what you call this guy, you get a job over there. You understand? So I don't say, well, who did you sleep with to get this job? Like, Toby is like, hey, did you steal this dog? <laughs> That's what he asked. Was he stolen? If you were not supposed to be dealing with things that are stolen. My point is, work for your husband. And, by the way, that's a huge job on the man. Yeah, because it puts a lot of weight on the man. That the man, the man must work extra. But the man must must improve himself to be a high earning man. So that you can work for your husband. He must be a high earner. And work for the man, it's easy to upgrade. We get better with time, you see. Yeah. Our value increases exponentially over time. It's easy for a man to be a high end and then a woman to be a high end. It's easy for the man. You understand? Because the most I fail us that way. Okay, now I'm gonna end the class right there. No, but wait. Hold on. Hold on a second. You know what? Give me the
the book of uh, give me first Timothy 3. Give me first Timothy 3. Read 3 and verse 4. 4 and 5. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. Watch this. One that would have well his own house. You see that? So guess what, sisters? The man that you're gonna be married to in Israel, they follow the godly discourse, they follow the commandment, they follow the counsels and all that. Guess what? They must be ruling well their own house. Read. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. That means you must be involved in your children's life. You must understand exactly what they are doing, what they are up to. Me, I know what the hell going on. Man. I'm listen, I'm a detective in the house. I've been investigating. So this one is generating a lie in real time. They think I don't know it. Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house. If a man does not know how to rule his own house, what's going to happen? How shall he take care of the church of God? You see that? You cannot take care of the 12 tribes of Israel if you don't know how to rule well your own house. And if you don't know how to rule well your own house, you will not be at the table. Your house must be in order for you to be at the table. If you're already, already at the table and I'm suspecting something, woo! I feel sorry for you. Sister? Mm -hmm. Yep. So when you get home, you're like, what did you do? You're going to come back again on the floor and embarrass me? <laughs> okay, read the verse again, verse 1. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You cannot take care of the church of God. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So, guess what, men? Yes, the sisters, this is their roles and all that. Guess what? We are supposed to be, have our, we'll be on our A game. We must be on our A game. That's it. You understand? I already went over that manhood and responsibility. You just watch that class. Okay, all praise it to the most high. Okay, let's pray, pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. For laying his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's give thanks unto the most high God and to his son, our King. For I have received of the Lord, then which also I delivered unto you, and the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to pray. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and shall be, be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We pray. Amen. 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 Okay. All praises to the most. All praises to the most high God, man. I hope you learned. Hope you receive the edification this day. Okay. All praises.